yes it's nine o'clock and we're live i hope all of you are well and um yeah something really weird's happened this has never ever happened before um i can't find jason anywhere i don't know what is going on it was supposed to be going ahead yesterday at 9 p.m um as we agreed um a few um, weeks before and his mate matt who deals with all of his emails etc said can we reschedule for tonight at 9 p.m i said yep no problem at all um my understanding is there are they've been totally snowed under with all of the convention stuff that our cakes have just done over in Texas. Now, it, it sounds like it went way more than they expected. They expected probably 30, 40 people or so, 300 turned up, and they just got absolutely bombed with it all. So it's either is completely forgotten or there's been some serious technical thing. But um, I've sent um, Jason and Matt um, the joining link to this live stream um as planned um 20 minutes before so one minutes ago now oh oh my god check it out <laughs> holy shit you made it i told you i was gonna be here holy mother f <laughs> <laughs> dude i thought oh my god i can't get all of you anywhere here he is guys um this is jason Bashirs, the guy i've just been telling you about um live from texas how's it going over there brother pretty good how's my audio Crystal clear? Sounds good. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. Fair play to you. Listen, you're going to have to send me your um, email address because I've got some stonking good coffee for you right here, buddy. Hot lava java. That sounds good to me. Dude, honestly, no joke. I'm a good friend of mine who is in the parachute regiment here in the UK, and he got me onto coffee years ago, and that stuff, that's my go-to, man. It's the only thing that keeps me awake, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's the only thing I'm addicted to. Yeah, same here, dude. I mean, without it, I mean, I've got serious sleep issues like Matt, and um, I tried everything, and that's the only stuff that actually works. It gives right. me five hours of pure awakeness, and it is totally cool. Good to see you, mate. Anyway, I can't believe this has actually happened. Totally stoked that you're here. And well, um, well, I mean, we, we were going to do this over a month ago. We just had so many things come up. Yeah, I mean, the convention went pretty good, huh? Yeah, I was really surprised how fluid that went. Yeah, that was really <laughs> First good. of many, I hope as well, brother. Yeah, that was a. Uh, there was probably over four hundred people that showed up, but they were there, and like the morning group was about three hundred, and then the the second group was like three hundred and sixty people, but it was a lot of different people. So, oh, yeah, there was a lot of people coming and going. Yeah, I know what that's like. So years ago, I started um, what's called a prepper meet here in the UK. And uh, most, we've had about three, 350 people turn up. Uh, most of them are veterans and stuff. And we do um, raffles for charities and stuff to raise money and awareness for them guys. And yeah, it's a good thing because, you know, we all get together and we all, it's all prepping stuff. And once it very nearly happened that it was going to happen in America as well. It almost happened, but it was um, this place and it wasn't too far from the Pentagon. And from how it looked there was going to be a thousand preppers turn up and they fought all of these guns and people in one place and no matter what we tried it just didn't happen but one day maybe i'll come over to america that'd be sweet that'd be cool yeah we're, um, we're just checking people in the chat and it's looking good we got 600 plus already that's pretty good for a weekday and um yeah tonight ladies and gentlemen we're going to be talking all things prepping now i did have a few questions for um for you guys for me to ask jason about what he usually does but what we're going to try and do is try and keep it um prepping because there's a lot of guys who probably just won't get it jay you know so um we sort of believe that there is some um, big stuff coming down the pipeline um in this reality anyway should we say and it's a good idea to prepare for it because there's so many things which are going to seriously um, get under people's skin and it's already starting to happen slowly. I believe personally that 2020 was the fire button, which really wrapped up a lot of stuff. Now, um, I, I said to Jason earlier, I don't know if you got the message, man, but um, I checked with the YouTube guidelines and we are okay to show anything we want as long as it's not a firearm. So if you've got stuff that you want to show, that's cool. I've got a few bits and pieces here as well. So that'd yeah, be sweet. I really wasn't sure, so uh, I didn't 
I didn't really prepare anything. I, I do have a couple things in my studio that are pretty interesting, but as far as my arsenal, I didn't even bring it. I was going to do a live like at my storage because, uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know YouTube is real strict, especially on monetization. If you're showing any type of firearms, I don't, I don't yeah, know. I, I checked the policy and, and everything's good apart from you know real firearms. But yeah. one of the most important things you guys should arm yourself with a proper old school dictionaries okay oh, there's yeah. words in there which you will not find that, hey that old. looks that looks pretty nice i'm jealous what year is that oh this isn't as old as you think this was i think 1930s and um, my my, old, my dad found this down south and he sent it up to me but i'm trying to find them um, stuff from the 17 and 1800s but lots of it are French German dictionaries, but I'm keeping looking, brother. I'm gonna find some details. Well, I mean, you're gonna have a real problem before the 1720s finding anything in English. You're gonna find <laughs> it's almost all gonna be in French, German, and yeah. anything at anything before 1681, 1682 is pretty much gonna be all Latin. Yeah. It's all well when a translation involved, huh? Yeah, well, Gutenberg started publishing everything, you know, 1450s, 1460s, 1470s, and the printing press was being replicated and spread all over Europe. The only texts that were being printed were all in Latin because it was it was it was the uh, uh basically scribe universalists. It was the one that the French, the French academic, the you know, the scholars, the German yeah. scholars, and the English scholars, the only commonality they had from the Middle Ages was that everybody could write in Latin, even though they couldn't speak it. So mm -hmm. that's all they published in the first hundred years of publishing, everything's in Latin. Then it started, then, it, then they then different countries started publishing. So you're gonna have a, a real hard problem. I'm a collector, and behind yeah. me, you see all on the floor, all around me, up here on these shelves, everything you see me are books from the 1800s. But uh, I don't have a single book in my library from the 1700s. I mean, we're talking about those books going to the thousands of dollars now, even more for books in the 1600s. I, I have PDFs. I have actual PDF copies of many books from the 1600s and 1700s, but they're very difficult to find in hard copy. And one of the reason is, is, is this, it's parasites. Parasites and bookworms are the reason books don't last. This yeah, why, yeah. This is why they microwave a lot of old libraries to kill those parasites. It's just those books, just they're just hard to find. Old, yeah. Private collectors are the only one has them. It's just like ancient weapons, like uh, old antique weapons, Scythian blades and all that. Even these, I mean, these are made of metal, but they still they still decay. Every, everything about them. I got yeah, old, yeah. I've got old I've got old weapons, old sabers. Like this right here is old service saber. Oh, very nice. Yeah, but Do you know what? There's, there's a guy in the chat right now, and um, I've got to show you this before we crack on. Now, I was so honoured. He he actually made this for me. Oh, a sword, yes. And I I'll tell you one team. thing. Yes, that's nice. Nah. And I wish I had my sword so I could show it to you. <laughs> but yeah, Brian, if you're watching, brother, I'm oh, absolutely yeah. um. I don't have the sword. I'm still wheeled in this. Here we go. The There's show started, boys and girls. That's nice. That's nice. I like that. Is it double edge? Yeah, it's both sides. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's razor as well. That's nice. Now, oh, uh, there are modern weapons manufacturers that are now replicating the older weapons, but they're using newer materials. You know, mm -hmm. like, th like this right here. This manufacturer is Reaper. This is a real popular one, the Reap the Reaper brand right here. Whoa. Reaper makes battle axes, war axes, they make spears, and they make swords, and, and they make them out of modern materials, so they last longer and they're better. However, the Reaper weapons are, are made to the style of a lot of ancient weapons. These are really good for home defense. You gotta understand, I mean, three or four, three or four weeks after a total systemic collapse. These are the weapons you're going to want to have. You're not going to want to have a gun because no one's manufacturing munitions. Unless yeah. you have access to gunpowder, you can't even stamp your own bullets anymore. So, mm. I mean, uh, these are the weapons for these are the weapons that you'll need. You'll need in a uh, in a situation of absolute systemic collapse, especially if you're still alive three to four weeks after a collapse. It's these yeah. weapons that that will that will defend you. This is awesome. Mm. This is a whole spear. And that's awful. a good thing because 
it's the good thing about that. I mean, what what people are taught um, in basic martial arts, like I've done a long, long time ago, is you need to keep your distance. So yeah. something like that absolutely buys you that space this, and time. A weapon like this, Funky, mm. a weapon like this will allow you to eliminate an adversary before he can even swing a baseball bat. You yeah, can yeah. reach him before he can reach you. And That's still nice hold on. Rib you got there. Yeah, and still hold on to your weapon. It's nice. I like this. I bought three. I bought three of these, but the uh and I've got some weapons I like to show you, but I just can't. It's YouTube. I just gotta leave those alone. I'm gonna have to jump this out because this is too close. Right. And this was another thing right now. This was sent to me from we got really good friends over in Ohio. You're probably familiar with the company Cold Steel. Yes. Now, a friend of mine had one of these a long, long time ago, and I really wanted one, which couldn't get them here in the UK. Right. But thank God, you know, they sent it over, and this, they call it um, a two-handed katana. Okay, yeah, that's a katana. Yep. But it's got the it's got the nice tip on the front. Yeah. All these modern manufacturers are making these old weapons again. It's badass. Yeah. I'm all for well, it. Yeah, exactly. You've got a massive swing of that. I mean, that is going to um, yeah. it's going to do something to protect your family, which is the most important thing. Because when you look at it, you know, if not if, but when all this stuff comes down the pipeline, you are going to need something. Because guess what, boys and girls? The police ain't coming. No one's coming. Right. It's already happening right now. You've got a problem, a burglar or someone's trying to get into yeah. your home. You phone 999 or where Jace is 911. Guess what? If you're lucky, they might turn up within the hour. But what is a criminal going to do in that time? You have to do something. I got to turn this tablet off. One of my tablets just ghosted on me. just came on. <laughs> I hear your voice. Hold on. One of my tablets just ghosted on me. There it is. There it is. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, man. I got all kinds of things going on over here. Oh, dude. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, if those days ever come, I'm... I'm also gonna do it. I'm also gonna do it in style, Funky. Oh, how check it. that out, baby. We'll do that in style. That looks almost Persian or something, doesn't it? That's beautiful. Yeah, this is a wolf's head knife. Do you know what? When you speak real terms, it'd be an honor to die by a blade like that. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, we all wish, we all wish those times wouldn't be come, would you know wouldn't be coming, but. But it, well, but yeah, all, there was um, in all reality, was in all reality was. sorry, dude, carry on. I say, in we all wish for things to continue, you know, the status quo, and, the, and that these these type of events would not happen. But the truth is, is how much more are we going to be forced to endure before we want this event to happen? <coughs> hmm. You understand? I mean, it's just, uh, oh, yeah. how much more are they going to take from the people before the people just realize, you know, what we don't care about a systemic collapse? Maybe we need a reset. So. It's looking that way. I mean, I remember David like a long, long time saying it's going to be beautiful in the end, but we're going to have to go through some serious stuff before we get there. And it looks like it's starting to ramp up. I mean, look what's been going on in, in Paris and France. It's just been nuts out there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You guys, you guys probably have better access to the news over in Europe than we do. You know, uh, we like in the in the land of the free and the brave here in America, we like to believe that we're free and we like to believe that we get accurate information from other places in the world. But we don't. All the news here is filtered. It's filtered terrible. So I really don't have an accurate picture of what's really going on in Europe. I've had friends uh, like Stephen Walsworth, who just recently passed away with all the covid complications. But he's just one of about 40 people that I know in the UK that have recently passed away. And uh, for health health issues and health problems, and uh, he was giving me a lot. He was telling me a lot, but it, I mean, it uh, it seems like the UK is suffering what France and many other countries in the world are suffering with this: the implementation of a fifth column being specifically set among the population of European countries. It seems mm -hmm. like European countries are being targeted by these NGOs. These NGOs, these globalist organizations, are funding for all these foreigners to come and just lay up in their hotels, lay up in their in their in their uh, B Airbnbs and all their cottages. And it seems like uh, even the, even the United States has been flooded with 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 uh, non residents, and it's all being funded. It's all organized, and it's all yeah. European European and Western countries that are suffering this. Yeah, I mean, I remember you saying um, 
when you're still one of your lives and you, and you mentioned when I popped up in a chat that I think your words were, oh, I think is I'm over there exposing all the BS. And it's true. There is a lot of BS which is happening. And I'm doing my best to expose it without overstepping that line where my channel gets taken down, you know, because I started this back in 2012 and it's taken a long time to get to. We've just passed over 100K subs, which is awesome. And it would be a shame to just to say one thing too much and they go by channel. Then all of a sudden you can't reach out to the people, as it were. So we do have to take it to the line. Yes, you um, do. You got you got to you got to be careful what you say. That's why. Yeah. On archaics, I'm a. Uh, I speak in generalities. I don't use pronouns. I'm not isolating individual politicians that are corrupt or organizations that are corrupt. I'm basically just talking about the corruption itself. So yeah. this doesn't really target me because a lot of people are doing the same thing. Those channels that get a lot of scrutiny and get canceled are the ones that are actually identifying people up in government and politics and inter and global, you know, globalism and name calling them and, and giving up their their dirt. You know, oh, better be careful because I've been doing some of that. I've exposed yeah. all sorts of um, stuff. Yeah, I just I kind of leave the pronouns alone and I just talk about the general concepts because it's uh, what's hap what's hap what's happening to me is basically the end result of long term planning that began around the end of the the 1700s with the Napoleonic uh, re redistribution of wealth during the yeah. Napoleonic era. And this is long-term planning by a very small culture of people that have more control over the world than most people would ever want to believe. And mm -hmm. they're the, and it's a war. They basically have a war against West. They're, they're a war against Western nations, the very nations that took them in when the Roman empire kicked them out. So it's a, uh, these people, these people have been doing this for a long time. Like I said, it's long-term planning, and yeah. we have to be very careful about what we say, which is another reason why we're launching. This month, we're launching Archaics.tv. By next yeah. month, it will be fully up, up, up and running, and, and anybody that we've done work with on YouTube, like you and other channels I've done podcasts with, are welcome to come over there. And if YouTube ever collapses you, you've got a place with us over there on Archaics.tv. We're gonna have we're gonna have a lot of a lot of activity going on there where we can talk about the things we need to talk about that we cannot discuss on YouTube. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the way forward. I mean, currently in the background, we've got a web, website being developed, and we're open to do a similar thing on there because it's just a matter of time you can see it happening the things that we talk about at some point it's going to be no you're reaching too many people see you later and that's it game over but we've always had a plan i've got all of my videos backed up like all of yours yeah and um you need it's like um you know if we're if we're true preppers why wouldn't we do something like that because it's again right. it's all part of it you know and um even you know people new to prep i mean even if you like yourself you've done a road trip you know, to just jump on a bike and go, you know, there's certain things which could go wrong and you're really going to have to just hope for the best. But usually if you go for a long drive, you're going to take some food with you. You're going to check your tires before you go, check all the fluids, all of that sort of thing. Maybe make sure you've got breakdown cover or tools because if something right. happens and you're in the middle of nowhere, well, guess what? A lot of people would go for their phone and then they yeah. realize I've got no signal. I've got no network. You can't get help. Then what are you going to do? You know, yeah. it's just a basic way of that's prepping. That's all it really is, is thinking ahead. That road trip taught me a lot. Now, <laughs> I'll bet you, there are whole vast stretches of the United States in West Texas. West Texas is huge. It literally takes me 12 hours from where I'm at to get out of the state of Texas driving at 75 miles an hour. That's how huge Texas is. And that's not even the full width of Texas. That's just from Central East Texas where I'm at to get all the way to El Paso just to get out of Texas, just to get into New Mexico. Then it takes me a long time to cross New Mexico, then Arizona, then get into Southern California. Listen, there are huge, vast areas of the United States. You don't have any cell signal at all. So I can imagine, yeah. Oh, yeah, you don't have any. So, and I was testing it when I was on my road trip. I was testing it. I still have a lot of videos to release from that one trip. It was a 12 day trip. I have a lot of videos I haven't even put on my channel yet. One, 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 one on the print screen. I'm a bugger for that. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked at the chat. We got 1,111 people, all the ones. Oh, yeah. Um, 15 <laughs> minutes before we went on, I, I launched on YouTube, Telegram, Facebook, 
Oh, and I, I contacted six of my moderators and I told everybody I'm going live. I didn't know you and I were going live. I thought we were pre-recording one. But as soon as I looked on YouTube and looked you up about an hour ago, I saw we were going on live. I went, I started hitting everybody up, telling them, hey, man. Uh, uh, oh, dude. <laughs> I started, I started to catch you all by surprise, man. But but we're going live today. Yeah, damn good. And, you know, like we said earlier on, you know, if you can um, do anything you can to sort of distance yourself and, you know, potential possible attackers, one thing you can do which is really cool is crossbows as well with like laser dots on there and anything like that and also when the bolts run out you can always make your own too so is that They're a 60 pound? To make them. huh is that a 60 pound 80 pound what is that no that's um 200 is, pound this is, is a, that this a 200 is a pound tension yeah no 185 sorry okay yeah. 185 185 is, is the same as 200 in my book yeah, yeah, so it's pretty damn. Yeah, yeah you anything, won't be at the wrong end of this. Anything you want, you get over, yeah. Anything huh? you get over one twenty, you're going to kill somebody. Yeah. Oh damn straight, dude. I mean, you could, if you used to get say six people stood behind each other and you mm -hmm. was about ten feet in front of them, mm -hmm. damn, this thing will go through all of them. Yeah. And it's just another thing of making sure you got distance. I mean, yourself, you got air rifles. Yeah. Yeah. And with this one, I've got the scope. It's just zoomed right up close. I mean, I can go right. 50 yards. And as long as this is stable, I in a prone position or something like that, you can actually get a squirrel in the eyeball. So right. if you can get a squirrel in the eyeball, you can get something else in the eyeball, if you understand what you're So, So on YouTube, it's, it's safe to show pneumatic weapons. You just can't show actual weapons? Well, they actually say firearms. And, and I checked up the UK definitions because people should check on right. a regular basis or before you do something like this. Right. It's okay. And to my knowledge, that is not classed as a firearm. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I have some right here. I mean, I got I have a I have a 22 with a silencer right here. Yeah, that one's got a bit of a silencer on there. It's not well, amazing, but yeah. It's well, if, you're talk, if you're talking about pneumatic weapons, this right here is a breakover. Yeah. This is a breakover 22, and it shoots actual 22 rounds but it's but it's a pneumatic weapon it, it, yeah. it, it's only propelled by air so yeah same here so since you're showing pneumatic weapons this right here is my baby this isn't gonna this isn't gonna kill anybody but it's gonna hurt them this is a pneumatic weapon this is a laser Ooh. it's a laser sight on that that's all laser sight see that's all laser sight right there oh man Check this, out Jason the Terminator right now. This is a new mat. This is a pneumatic weapon right here. It shoot. It shoots rapid fire eighteen times, all propelled by Whoa. air. Air. Sweet. After after the eighteen shots, I got to take out the whole cartridge and put a new one in. But it's good for eighteen rapid fire shots. It will get somebody's attention real quick. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, another good thing as well. Like you could class this as a non-lethal weapon is the torch. Believe it or not. Oh, in this one, the cool thing about this is they call it a Coubaton. Right. So you've got extended either side. It's got a stroke bezel. It's sharp on the edge. And the best thing about that, you whack that button down hard and it strobes like crazy. And you've oh, got yeah, like yeah. nearly 2,000 lumens. I mean, a lot of people with a 2,000 lumen strobe button, what are they going to do? They're going to shut your eyes. Then well, you can also, you can also induce them. seizures in some people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 100%. And like um, <coughs> this is one of the first things I've got this. Now, one of the main reasons I've got this is because I'm not too keen on axes, but little tomahawks like this, if I can get it out. Something like this. Man, I wish I knew. I have so many, so many axes and weapons I could have showed, man. They're all. They're it's all weird. Cool. I told Matt about this ages ago, but I guess he didn't pass it on. No, <laughs> I, I, just, word, no I just, <laughs> I, I didn't know we had the clearance to show weapons on YouTube, so I didn't. Yeah, know yeah, I, 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 I said to him I'd check, and, and I did yeah. check, and the only I'll thing you can't show on a live stream. I'll tell you is... what, let's, let's wait a few weeks or a month to just do another one, because I got some show. Yeah, of course, cool, dude. <laughs> I got yeah, some... I've only got a few. I didn't want to get all of them down, because we could do like a, a six-hour live stream, and I still won't get through them all, because. Yeah, well, I mean, not just, not just the weapons, but I have some really nice camping gear. I mean, oh. Uh, I have containers, travel containers, like you said. If if I ever get stranded, if I'm in the middle of nowhere, I'm not going to rely on my cell phone. That's that's a good convenience. But if I yeah. need to survive for about a week out in the wilderness, I got everything in those in those packs I need. 
and I can, use, I can use the van as shelter until I'm rescued, and I can live off all the stuff I have, and I have all the camping gear, and, and I even have the hunting gear, or I can I can use the van as shelter until my supplies run down to about three days, and then I'll just mm-hmm. put everything in a backpack, and I'll, and I'll hit, hit the trail looking for help. So It's the same. I don't know if you can see that green pack right over there by the fire. Yeah. That one there. I'm t- tickling it now. Yeah, that's all packed and ready to go minimum of 72 hours. But, yeah. um, it's just keep, everything that I need in there. I do the same thing. I do the same. Yeah. Thing. I have I have a get and go pack. Yep. <laughs> well, that's it. They they call it all sorts. They call it a, a get home bag, a bug out bag, a grab bag, a go bag. But at the end of the day, it's a bag of stuff that you think is going to help you for a minimum of three days. Yeah. And the most yeah. of it is up there. Yep. You know, yeah. knowledge. You, you oh, know, yeah. the you know, the more that, that you know, the less that you should carry. Otherwise, you're going to end up taking something way too heavy, and you ain't going to get very far, all that sort of thing. Just got to go through these knives, and I can get them out of the way. Now, this, this is awesome. You must have heard of a company in the states called Tops Knives. Yeah, I've seen them. Top, good top, of, Tops manufactures everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're awesome. I was good friends with Mike Fuller, who passed away, and he is is the guy who founded Tops. And when I went on the TV doing the prepper stuff, they sent me this. Yep, my favorite. Yeah. That little thing there. Yeah, back in the day, we called those Rambo knives. Man, that is serious. It's a great big eight mil thick, and right. it's um, I'll call it the Armageddon knife. I call it. That's the Steel Eagle One 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 A. That is, that would do anything because yeah. you know some of the guys will carry like a little bushcraft knife or something. But dude, if you need to get through a fire door or a car window or something, it's right. not going to cut it. Right. Something like that will do more than just carve a few feather sticks. If you catch my trip. Yeah, I like that. That's that's good. That's a nice one. It is. I love that thing. But yeah, I think maybe we should do another stream where we get a bit of heads up and we can show some more of our tools of the trade, as it were. Yeah, there's all there's all kinds of interesting things like the little butane stoves, the little tripods that uh the use the little phosphorus bricks to, so you can get a fire going real fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of there's all kinds of nice little things they got. They got you can get at Academy or you can get at these different Army Navy surplus stores and stuff. Oh, yeah. I love surplus stores. Don't you love oh, the yeah. smell of surplus in the morning, huh? <laughs> Hell yeah, that's right. Somebody, that somebody, right? squirrel sniper here in the chat. I know him. He's a he's he's in my group a lot. He asked if we uh diesel our deals. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna explain real quick for people yeah, who yeah. don't who don't know. Like the dieseling the barrel with with different types of lubricants, people use different stuff. That's all. That's all good for accuracy. And yes, it's good. It will speed speed the projectile up. I don't like doing it because when I when I tried dieseling in the past, my gaskets go out faster. My seal, yeah, my, seal my seals in the compression chamber, it just goes out. So uh, I guess it's not the time for it, is it? Yeah, but yeah I'll get it. I mean, you can you can change the springs and you can make it more powerful. But you can get it powerful. But the thing is. You lose the accuracy then. Yeah. So I just say keep it as it is. Just get real good at um, shooting. One last thing I've got to show you is this one. Now this, this was sent to me from a guy who watches my videos. Mm-hmm. Now he has just finished his term serving in the U.S. Marine Corps. He's based out in Japan. Okay. He's back over here. He might even be in the chat right now. All right. But this, I'll carry this thing everywhere I go, and I'll tell you what, that is an awesome. Again, cold steel. That's the Recon One. No, that thing there, that's yeah. an insane knife. You can't break these. And I'd rather have something which is strong and built to last. Right, right. Than something that looks pretty and you it, it, it's it it good to have, It's good to have a good lock mechanism because if you're if you're in the middle of using that and you haven't locked it right and you don't know it's locked, that blade will fall right back on your fingers. Oh, damn, yeah. yeah. Do you know what? I saw the, the promo videos that Cold Steel were doing about these years and years ago now, over 10 years ago. And I think what they've done is they cut them um, a, pe- um, a really thick piece of wood in a gymnasium and they cut a little slot in there mm-hmm. they opened a knife put it in there and he got some guy 250 pounds to hang on it and it yeah. would not break that lot yeah that's good that that's sold good. it to me straight away dude <laughs> yeah, those knives are only as good as as good as those locks you're right yeah too straight yeah yeah definitely and i'll tell you what what we're gonna do if i can find it i'm gonna just show something on the screen now and i want you if you can if you can elaborate from what you remember <laughs> about when you was reading these okay wow fire in the ashes blood in the ashes death in the ashes. <laughs> i love william johnstone 
Damn straight. Me too, dude. You read yeah. the series? The whole thing? The ashes. I read the first 24 books and then Whoa. found out and then found out that the series goes up into the 30s. Insane, dude. There's over 30 books in that series. And it was the last series he wrote before he died. Before oh, that, he, before that, he wrote about a uh, smoke Jensen, about Kirby. Kirby Jensen, the, the last gunfighter, mm. uh, the last the last mountain man. Yeah. He's written like four series. You know, I've read I've read all four of them. Three of them are westerns with gun gunfighters and mountain men. And then that yeah. one right there was literally about the total systemic collapse of the entire world. And, yeah, and right. he goes into a lot of detail about what would how the different type of communities that would develop. And a lot of it, man, it's, it's a lot of it's rated R shocking shit. I mean, cannibalism, things that are happening are ter they're terrible. And then also it's good stuff, how communities come together and fight together and build together and how they're raiding all these old army depots and and it's it's a they're basically rebuilding World War II technology because it doesn't require electronics, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's awesome books, awesome. And it is, and it really gives your your head a, a good place to actually think ahead and sort of help towards. Yeah. And you learn all these hints and tips as well. I yes, mean, sure. for you guys, if, before I forget, I've put some links below this video to, I think it was um two or three different um documentaries all about society collapse now one of them jason i don't know if you've seen it um it was made i think it was 2013 here <coughs> in the uk and it's called blackout and i'll put if you haven't seen it the links below this video it's about an hour long and it just goes through what would happen if there was no electricity in the uk for one week and they had all of these professors and boffins and they theorized how long certain key infrastructure generators would run before they go out backups etc all of the contingency plans and it goes through it yeah. but it's an entire one hour thing it's quite interesting and you know, i do sort of recommend them when i've done these um prep and survival courses that people watch that right. because after watching something like that it will definitely get your head in a place where no one is coming and you do need to do something not for yourself yeah. for your family and loved ones too yeah, so, yeah. now uh, the the system the the situation in the uk <laughs> Is, is, is going to be a little bit different than that in the United States. Now, in the United States, we have almost a overwhelming law enforcement presence. Uh, each individual state has multiple tiers of law enforcement. Then there's also the federal law enforcement. There's military in all, in all our states as well. But they don't, they're don't. they just not out there where you see them all the time. But if there's anything that ever happens right now, in five minutes, you're overwhelmed with all different branches of law enforcement. They're there. The communication for law enforcement in the United States is pretty good. Now, hmm. but none of that means anything 48 hours to 72 hours after a total blackout because law enforcement, right. law enforcement yeah. themselves are trying to protect their own families and their own headquarters and stuff like that. And when you have, like in the city of Houston, when you have a, a population of 5 million people, listen, there's going to be about a hundred thousand people in that population that after 48 hours are not going to stay home. They don't give a damn about the law. They're not scared about officers who are not going to show up. And in groups of 10 and 15, they're going to start kick door in everybody's houses. They're going to start yeah, yeah, yeah. Door neighborhoods. They don't care. This is just 48 hours to 72 hours because that's all it's going to take to empty mm. out all the grocery stores. Oh, when, it's just going to say, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. When people yeah. don't realize cops aren't coming. It's over with. There's nothing stopping locals from going to all the general stores, all the Walmarts, all the shopping malls. And within 72 to 96 hours, foot four they go. They got footprints. I don't know if you know that um, in the chat there. Keep up the good work. Um, love Jason's work. Yeah, we got um, Phoenix <coughs> Protocol in the house too, dude. Oh, yeah. Phoenix Protocol's here. I yeah, see. Yeah, I've, yeah. Seen, you know, I've seen a lot of a lot of names I'm familiar with in your chat right I now. I know. I couldn't believe it when it all started popping up early. This is way when the chat started. We got 1,200 already now, so awesome. it's warming up pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's I'm a, familiar with a lot awesome. of these names. So, yeah. so, so funky. It's a. Uh, I don't know what the blackout projections are, but the U.S. military has already done think tanks on this with civilian authorities, and they've both come up with the same same conclusions. If there is a nationwide or even in some some instances statewide, like three or four states just go offline, even yeah. in that incident, even in that, there's no way to stop 
the tide of violence that's going to happen when people mm. realize two things. One, help's not coming. And two, the police is not going to stop me from going to get what I want from my neighbor. Yeah, that will spread like a wildfire It'll for sure. Like a wildfire. And in, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the greatest defense is a network and a community of people who all who are already prepared for this. So yeah. it's a, and what I mean is, is if you live in a community where, I mean, there's a lot of people who are not like me. I, I purposely live far out in the country for a reason. I don't yeah, like, I do not like being near big cities. So I'm uh -huh. way out here in the country and things out here are going to be a little bit different. Everybody out here has got automatic weapons. Everybody out here is pretty much on the same page and and uh we know who to rely on, who not to in this in this general community. Now, in the city, the best thing you can do is is basically shack up in one house with like-minded people to where there's like 20 or 30 people in that one house and the men have weapons and the doors and windows are protected and everybody has pulled all their resources, water, food, supplies, candles, gas, mm -hmm. whatever, everybody has gone to that one location because those who try to stick out a, a, a very extended blackout alone and on, them, on themselves are just victims. They're just victims yeah. because roving mobs of people are going are going to go door to door. This is mm -hmm. it, it's just, there's nothing stopping it. We haven't really seen anything like this, you know, um, since maybe the Byzantine era when the Greens and the Reds were in full riot and the Byzantine Empire suffered systemic collapse. Uh, roving mobs just tore up whole residential areas and districts. We haven't really seen anything like this, but but it can easily erupt. All it takes is just shutting the lights off. Just shut the lights off for two days and you're going to see what happens. It's crazy. It's weird, though, isn't it? Because when you go back through history, <laughs> like, like you know yourself, you know, all of these empires, they rise and they fall and you have battles, you have wars, etc. Nowadays, it's almost like it's non-conventional. If you cyber attacked a country and mm -hmm. shut down their infrastructure, job done. I'll yeah, let them the each other and it will happen, wouldn't it? Yeah, the job is done. Now, don't get mm -hmm. me wrong. It doesn't mean that 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 infrastructure can't come back online and that the military, which was going to be insulated from that type of collapse, the type of collapse we're talking about is not going to affect the military mm -hmm. for the most part. I mean, we have, we have to take in consideration here in the United States, we have Cheyenne Mountain. Cheyenne Mountain yeah. with literally 17 cities pancaked underground under a military facility that has an army unto itself there and they store jets, tanks, they armor them. They have everything to rearm the entire United States has been put in all these facilities under Cheyenne Mountain. So there could be a, there could be a very rapid uh, resuscitation. However, that type of resuscitation would still suffer a large po a large loss of the population who died by murder, who died by accident, who died from lack of medical supplies, who died in hospitals because the power was out. All that. there's going to be a lot of that. And mm -hmm. those, those who read that series uh, out of the ashes, you're going to get a really good picture within just three books of how fast all this can happen. I'm talking about yeah. to, to the to the point where you actually wake up from a daze. 21 days after the lights went out, you wake up from from a daze and you look back on the last 21 days. And one, you can't be, believe you survived. And two, the world is now a fundamentally different place. Yeah. And it's going to take. Well, it probably won't even happen in someone's lifetime to get back to any sense of normality after something collapses like that. Yeah, it would be so they, they would have to restructure everything from the ground up. I mean, bringing the power back online is 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 would be the easy part. Bringing the infrastructure back to where shipping continues, trains and boats and and cargo and all that starts to continue. Restocking the stores, getting everything flowing the back of where before any of that can happen, military has to security. come and impose martial law. Yeah, need to secure it. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, it just goes to show <clears throat> and expose really how delicate our modern day society actually is yes, because is. like i said one thing no electricity that's going to affect so many things there's no atms there's no traffic lights there's no street lights crooks are going to go well i can operate under cover of darkness etc the police are going to have a nightmare because the police no matter what anyone says they're always going to be outnumbered by the population now let me tell you this a long time ago i was really good friends with this guy 
who got really high up in the police and so much so he got headhunted for our version of the nsa right and when i spoke to him one evening when we was out and i said to him I said look when all of this stuff actually happens what are the police going to do and he looked at me in the eye and he said most of us are going to be with our families That's right. straight away that said exactly what you said no one is going to come to help because let me tell you this if you're a current serving police officer whether it's america or the uk should all of his stuff go down and there's riots and people going door to door with their vans and taking whatever they want <clears throat> are you going to be 20 blocks away doing civil unrest or are you going to be at home making sure that your family's got a fighting chance of surviving all of this that's and right. the answer is pretty simple bro isn't it really that's right 100 percent. there's there's not going to be any emergency services that's over ems is done fire department's done police police are done texas rain the texas rangers marshals everybody's going to be worried about their loved ones their you know their children stuff like that there is not going to be any type of unified front in that event now now don't get me wrong maybe the first two two or three days there's an effort to maintain control but even a hundred police officers with all the arsenal and armament in the world will never be able to stem off a hundred thousand hungry people. Yeah. A hundred thousand hungry, hungry, angry, and armed people will always be able to over override a you know, hundred officers, no matter how they're armed. So this is the situation. They're going to go home. They're going to, they're going to hightail it out of there. And the major, the major cities are the ones where there's going to be the highest attrition rate. Mm-hmm. People are going to be killed, murdered. Everything's going down. Food's going to be taken. People are going to starve hospitals, medical, because of lack of metal, medical supplies, there, there, there is a very significant, because, because the people have been living longer, people have been getting older and we've been living in, in a sedentary lifestyle for so yeah. long within, within four or five days, the elderly population is going to be decimated. Not just, not just because, Hey, Benny Riley, but yeah, the, yeah check it out. The elder, I know Benny Riley, he's good people. The, uh, yeah, damn straight. Yeah, yeah. Cool, hey, uh, dude. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, the uh, the elderly population is going to be absolutely, yeah. absolutely. There's another one from Texas, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's one of my guys on the Archaics team. He's a, he's a moderator. He's actually was at the uh, e- event with us, too. No, so, how uh, sweet is that? Man, yeah, I'm glad big, that went well for you, bro. Seriously. That's, that's, that's Big brilliant. John. So yeah, the elderly population will be decimated for a couple of reasons. One, they don't have the medic- medicines to keep them alive anymore. Nobody's taking care of them. Nobody's coming to feed them, help them use the bathroom, shower, all that stuff. And then tr- just pure destitution, loneliness, and just giving up is going to is going to end a lot. So the this systemic collapse will also be like a purge. So it could very well be pre-planned to do just that because when when a significant when a significant amount of the elderly population are eliminated and removed then all those insurance companies no longer have those burdens those medical facilities no longer no no longer have those burdens so governments don't have to pay their pensions etc they save more money that way yeah don't think that anything this systemic will happen by accident it will be pre-planned do you know what though you you raise a really good point here and i think about this every now and again and it's something i don't hear anyone else talking about should something like this happen or so when this happens i should say there's so many people who and it right or wrong they just won't better handle it up there and they're just going to probably do themselves in because the overwhelming stress and the realization that they're unprepared in some way they're going to want out of it. And a lot of people are literally going to terminate their avatar instantly, so to speak, right there and then. And that is going to take a huge amount of the population. And like you said earlier, you know, you're talking in America of all of the various states. Should something really bad happen in one state, you can bet your ass that lots of other states are going to send their law enforcement to help that state. Now, what happens if all states go offline? Right. There is yeah. no way near enough infrastructure to deal with the chaos. It's the perfect. It's the perfect. It's the perfect way to cover up a purge. Is just, is just take the infrastructure yeah. down. Hey Matt. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I do believe that we saw um, a training exercise happen in 2020, which I call when the issue happened. Now, over here in the UK, there was um, all of these care homes for the elderly, um, lots of elderly people in hospital as well. They was told that no one was allowed to visit them. Right. And they've done all of this. And, were, and lots of them just passed away, including my mum. She died in um, early 2020 before oh, yeah. we had the lockdowns here, etc. But luckily, it wasn't to do with the issue. But yeah, I believe that was just one big training exercise to gather data from all the way around the world of how each country had their script and they'd done certain things. They got certain reactions, certain time frames. They got all of that data back. I believe that they put it into quantum advanced AI computers to analyze human behavior based on that training exercise. Now, the more as we roll through this incredibly crazy decade, you're going to see a lot more of that. And they are going to be trying all sorts of um, things. I mean, we've did, we heard recently that our prime ministers ordered, what was it, 250 million shots of um, that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe something is coming down the pipeline real soon. But again, I just believe it's more training exercises, the more data, the more that they can wipe out X amount of different types of people. I mean, if you've ever read The Art of War, you probably have, Jace, you know, to do that, you literally have to do everything you can to your enemy to ensure an easy conclusion. And yeah, Niccolo Machiavelli wrote a really mm -hmm. good The Art of War. But I, I believe that's the one you're talking about, right? Or are you talking about yeah. Sun Tzu's? They Sun Tzu, both, yeah. Yeah, Sun Tzu wrote The Art of War, and so did Niccolo Machiavelli. And Machiavelli's version was basically how a king had to be a tyrant in order to control his people. You know? Yeah. So, but yeah, that's it's that would be an absolutely perfect way to deal with a lot of infrastructure problems. I'm not I'm not advocating it. I'm not saying that it should happen. I'm saying from the perspective of our controllers, a taking down the infrastructure, taking down the internet, so when they bring the infrastructure back online, they can do so with military zones now because those are required to get everybody back in check. Now, they've eliminated a huge, a massive amount of the population that were undesirables anyway. So yeah, this is all. This is from their perspective, and when they bring everything back online, now the new version of the internet is implemented with subtle changes that we may not be able to detect. But now, now their power of observation to be able to listen to us. Maybe they have even made every single one of our own devices a uh, into an interactive. Uh, uh, device to where now they can hear and see everything in our homes now instead of us just logging on to the internet even when even every time we're on now they can see and hear everything in our homes you never know what they're going to do it's uh no. they they have that they have that technology now so i don't know if they've they're able to implement it infrastructure wide unless they just take the whole down the whole infrastructure in order mm. to do that power it down so I've all, I've all, you know, I've already got predictions videos that say that there's going to be a major interruption this year. I don't want to know what that. Yeah. You, you say that, right. And I've actually, I created this based on <clears throat> what I heard from you. Now check this. <clears throat> there you go. Yes. Oh, uh, in August 8th. Now I, I really believe that he would have been, he would have already been removed by now. I already believe mm -hmm. that. But I also know that my new discoveries and wave diffusion actually show that this whole process was going to be drawn out. I just didn't see it before. Many processes are being drawn out uh, on the isometric projections, and this is this is a uh, this is some really intriguing stuff. I should have paid attention before. I think Square Peg Divergent on her channel was the one that noticed that Nixon did not turn in his resignation because this is the isometric gear for 1973. Nixon did not turn in his resignation, though, until August 8th. So there may be a parallel here, just like there's been many, many parallels with with, with presidents like like like, you know, Abraham Lincoln and Kennedy shared many, many parallels. Even their assassinations were in parallel. It's very it's very interesting. All the different names and all the all the different perimeters around that. It's, it's, it's great when you when you study that. It's It's amazing. But I'm 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 believing that they're about to remove that Phoenix protocol. Awesome. What a I, lovely believe, guy. I believe they're gonna remove they're gonna remove Biden, but it's probably gonna be him resigning. I don't know. Mm. But every bit of this is just <clears> basically it's you know, pardon my French, but 
This is a fuck you show. This whole this whole thing, this whole drawing out of international, global, and in and, 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 and national United States politics, every bit of this is so comical, so weird. Oh, yeah. It is clown so world. <laughs> yeah, it's clown world. It's almost yeah. as if the little tiny hats that are controlling all these narratives, man, are basically doing this just playing around. Just, just for fun, because mm-hmm. the narratives don't make sense. All the criminal activity that Biden has been implicated in and shown, all the cut top secret documents that were in different places that they shouldn't have been, all the things that were on the laptop of his son, all these things, any other president in American history would have already been escorted out the White House. And this just and all they do is just keep building on and adding this crime, adding add more, 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 more. And it's just it's gotten to it's gotten to the point of being ludicrous. You can't even yeah. follow it. You can't even follow it anymore. It's a clown show. It's almost like normalcy bias, isn't it? Regarding yeah. what power they can get away with now, which is insane, really, when you think. Yeah, about it. It, it's it, it's like it's like a it's like an emperor replacing his court with nothing but court jesters and having them run the empire. It's crazy. Yeah. This whole thing. Like they, they come in, they do the damage, they get their, their money or whatever it is, and off they go. I mean, yeah. when we look at them down in street in, in the UK, you know, I made a joke post on Instagram and I put a revolving door on the front because it just seemed people were just coming and going through that and none of them are elected. The same as the EU, that is completely unelected officials, the same as the UN, the same as the Trilateral Commission, all of these places, they are not elected and yet. I mean, look at the WF. They seem to be thinking they can do whatever they want. But I do have a feeling, I think you mentioned it too, that the WF, there's there's a lot of stuff going on inside there, and it's not as rosy as the picture they are painting. No, no they've lost a lot of international clout. That last meeting at Davos was like 50% attendance, and they tried to hide it. There was a lot of international leaders who just didn't go. They had lost their respect. Many of them have switched over to BRICS. They're now now joining a whole different economic alliance, a whole different Mm -hmm. economic forum, and they've abandoned them. But uh, it's, to me, to me, I believe somebody else is in control and they're allowing the former power structure, which was led by Pelosi and, and the socialist and, and Biden, they're allowing them to continue as the face so this other controller can man, can maneuver things and these people take the fall for it. It's all, Yeah, the fall guys. They yeah, really? they're, 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 they've now become the fall. They were in power, but now they've become the fall guys. It's, a, it's like one arm of the deep state taking another arm out right before things get really, really crazy. Because in my, in, my, in my predictions videos, I've been very specific, and we're seeing it on a daily basis now. We are absolutely seeing conservative takeovers all across all 50 states. The, the liberals and socialists are losing power everywhere. It's like a domino effect. Uh, the super majorities are all leaning to the conservative. Every bit of this was predicted by me two years ago when yeah. the when the liberals were absolutely in control of the entire United States House and Senate. Two years ago, I released predictions videos saying you guys need to be patient. Every bit of this is about to flip. In my predictions videos, I was also very specific when the entire YouTube world was talking about COVID being the new norm and that we're going to have mask mandates forever and that all this is the new norm and nothing's going to change. It's just going to get worse and worse. And all these travel mandates are going to be implemented. I I told everybody the exact opposite is true. This stuff's going to lighten up. Travel is going to continue. The countries are now opening their borders without requiring those 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 vaccines now. So Mm. this isn't any mysticism. This is all date sequence predictive analytics. This is using software to do these predictions based off mm-hmm. historical events and reality tunnels. It has nothing to do with anything mystical or nothing or none of that. But it was no. all very clear to me what was happening. Just what I didn't take into consideration was the further away the fulfillment of predictions are from the epicenter of analysis, the more we have a phenomenon called wave diffusion. And I wasn't mm-hmm. really paying attention to that. Now that yeah. I'm paying attention to it everything happening now does make sense these events are are unfolding but they're being stretched out 
just like the ripples on a pool of water. I was just going to say, when you put a pebble in the did. pond, then it goes. Yeah, yes, they just the, go they, there. the epicenter, the wider the ripples flatten out. This is exactly yeah. where we are. The flattening began in 2020. It got worse in 2021. It accentuated in 2022. And right here in 2023, we are now seeing all these things rapidly unfolding that were predicted two years ago. Yeah, so, so it just go up and peaks in the trough again, isn't it? Yes, it's it's crazy. It's crazy what's happening. It's crazy. I'll tell you what was interesting as you were saying about like, the BRICS nation and stuff earlier. Now, um, could you just mention what you said in some of your videos recently about? It's pretty much how I would say most of the world will see it that all of the oil and stuff is all out in Saudi. But how much oil is there in America, and how much of it are you guys sitting on, and how much is it going to make a difference okay. Okay. when all of this? transition that's, that's a really good point it's a really good point i've already i've already addressed this on my channel a few times um condoleezza rice about 15 years ago yeah gave, gave a little known interview where she was talking about just this and in that interview she, she mentioned listen the united states is long is into long-term planning and that planning happens to be done not by politicians but by military and this planning involved the capping of u.s oil wells all across the united states the united states is so rich in minerals and it is so rich in in, in its gross natural pro product and everything that it produces for the world that it can easily afford to keep drilling and pay for the drilling of all these oil wells and just cap them off and just frack for the natural gases and 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 and, and sell those and use those which it does for for propane and, and and butane and all that but condoleezza rice said that since the 1920s we have our oil companies have been finding all all this oil drilling down to it laying the pipe and then capping it so that we can instantly go in there within three days start start production in almost a hundred thousand different locations nationwide we are sitting on a tremendous amount of oil that's just sitting there and we have been buying oil from other countries <laughs> for years now for a plan it's all, it's all long term planning because it yeah, was always known it was always known that the U.S. dollar might come under attack. And if the U.S. dollar does come under attack, we can let it go so far to where we'll switch over to a petrodollar and we will back our own dollar and reinvigorate it and reboost our economy by, start, by now exporting the oil that we've been sitting on. And right now, we are in the position in the next year or so to go ahead and start doing that. And the greatest buyer to this is going to be Europe. Europe is yeah. Europe is going to buy all this oil. So it's a uh, yeah, this is long term planning. Uh, people believe in the in the systemic collapse of the American economy. I'm, I do not see it. I do not see it anywhere in the isometrics. I don't see it. America, America's economy basically is tantamount to leading the world's economy. The media mm -hmm. can say what it says about the dollar collapsing and other countries getting bigger and all that. But all it takes is a couple judicial decisions in the United States can basically collapse almost any economy in the world. So mm -hmm. politics runs economies and uh, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much at all to forge right. alliance with 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 another country and pull it out of brick. It can be done overnight. Pulling yeah. a pulling one of the brick brick nations out, doing a oh, deal, yeah, yeah. doing a deal. You watch him switch. You watch him switch. When things get for real, they're gonna go. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And, and and funky, I'm gonna tell you now. Every bit of this is preparatory to the next big war, which is pre-planned. The yeah. next, the next international conflict, and this is another thing that was in my predictions videos. In yeah, my, yeah, I was, I, was very, very, yeah. I was very adamant telling people two years ago that the that what's going on with Russia and Ukraine is going to remain with R Russia and Ukraine. I specifically said that NATO will not get involved. You will not see more armies going. This is not going to escalate into a multinational conflict. This is not the beginning of World War Three. Russia is going to do whatever it wants to do, and the rest of the world is going to let it. They're going to talk. They're going to bark. They're going to position themselves. They're going to do. They're going to have meetings. They're going to forge alliances. They're going to impose sanctions. But nobody is going to oppose Russia. All that's in my. All that's in my predictions videos, and it all yeah. unfolded exactly like that. This yeah, is not sure. the, yeah, not yeah. the beginning of World War Three. World War Three is planned. 
and it was planned as early as the days of, of 1880s. It was widely known among among people in Freemasonry and among the Israel, right? And among the mafia. Because mm-hmm. the original the original mafia, mafia was an acronym. It was a guy's name. It was all about doing mm-hmm. things in secrecy. He's the actual guy that we got the word mafia from. He's the one that designed all three world wars. And World War One and World War II did exactly what they were supposed to do according to his objectives. The third objective that was written about was an all-out war between Western nations that were Christian and Middle Eastern nations that are Muslim. And that's that's why all these foreigners from the Middle East have been planted in the UK, all throughout Texas, all throughout the United States. They have specifically been put where they're at. For, they don't know when it's going to take off or we don't know when it when, but they're already in position. Sleeper agents, sleeper cells, they have been yeah. distributed by these NGOs. These NGOs have specifically paid for these people to to be where they're at all over. So when this takes off, it's not a war that's going to be fought just in the Middle East. It's going to be a war fought in our own homelands as we take, as we do house cleaning, as we, as we take the fight to the streets to clean our houses, to then take the war because it's all about Jerusalem. Every Jerusalem's in the script. Every every bit of this is going Mm. to be a war caused because somebody is going to do something to the Dome of the Rock. And that's going to be the first domino. That's going to be the first domino. Yeah, and and there there is, believe it or not, some people out there that get confused with Apocalypse and Armageddon. Now, this we're talking about is Armageddon from how I see it. At that (laughs) time over there, at the right time, as you say, definitely Israel. I mean, I remember someone years ago saying, no matter what happens as we go for the next 20 years, just keep one eye on Israel. And yet it's definitely going to be stuff going on around the Dome of the Rock, as you said, 100%. It is going to come. And all of this, you just look at it, is planned sideshows, isn't it? Even the same with what's going on with Trump right now. You know, we're facing a pretty much massive big shudder through the financial system. And guess what? Every single news outlet in the US of A is saying right now, Trump this, mm-hmm. Trump that, Biden, blah, blah, blah. It's yep. always the same. Look at this, but we're going to be doing this. That's right. And That's they're masters, dude. I mean, you know, if you've got the mainstream media in your pocket, which they have, and when you like funnel it down, it's probably run by about six people, all of the major mainstream media news outlets globally. So yep. yeah, if you control what people have access to information through also like myself i like to do research and double check things before i put it up there and only i'd say 2019 you could search pretty much anything and you'll get it quite quick you try searching on google now you've got to go through 30 40 50 pages all of that is all mainstream stuff there's no independent analysis whatsoever so you've got it absolutely on point where you're going through old books no one's going to come into your home get your book, change it all, and put the book back on the shelf. Right. Do it online, and they've been doing it for years, hence the AI stuff you've been digging up, right? That's right. It's all, uh, you know, you already know, the all the data that I put on my channel from old books, it, it's phenomenal. People tell me all the time, man, I mean, if, if we live, because the context of my research is that we live in a controlled, simulated holography environment. So people, so people also, it's, it, they, they, they get turned off by that because they really don't know exactly what that entails. And uh, I've had to educate people to, to let them understand, listen, man, it doesn't matter what the phenomenon is. Anything that we just, just exercise a little higher scrutiny on, you'll find out that the lowest common denominator is always going to be coding. Not just arithmetic and all the science constants and all that, but even language and linguistics. When we, when we really study linguistics, we find codes. When we find the when we study the human anatomy, it, it basically dissolves all the way down to to the molecular level. From the molecular level, we examine it even more, and we find nothing but the double helix geometry and the genetic codes and the palindromes encoded in these genetic sequences. And we find out these palindromes have very, very, very noticeable mathematical structures that are formed in sequences that go forward and backward just like many of the historical events do so the very nature of reality on on the physical or on the biological 
biological level, everything is reduced to codes. It doesn't matter what kind of codes they are. Everything is coded. So in a codified, basically hologram or a codified real reality, we can see that these codes have predictive value. They have predictive value. Psychologists know this because they can predict your behavior based off your your the past antecedents. Things you have done in your past will often allow a psychologist to understand the trajectory of your personality and what you're going to do. Historical events are the exact same thing. So if I'm going to accurately predict events based off date sequence and analytics, then I'm going to need accurate historical information. I can only find that in old books, because if I look at any books published after World War II, it's an entirely different series of historical events that they're telling us of. The books published after World War II are not like the books published before 1901, 1902, 1899. It's different histories. There's fundamental changes. There is a massive amount of editing going on. So that's what Archaics is about, Funky. We, we examine the old books, and we look for the cycles and the epicycles in history, and we like to examine when the changes really started like in the 16th and 17th century, when somebody started rewriting books. It didn't get real bad until World War II, but mm -hmm. somebody already started putting together <clears throat> false model of our world in the late 1600s and it was a small order of men and they and, and they grew through the 1700s and there were different secret societies but they were all scholars they were all publishing books and they were all telling the same story and it's all bullshit mm. i'll tell you what I've got to play this this will make people think about the reality that we're in you think that's air you're breathing now Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, oh, i just got to check something here. I haven't seen that movie in probably 20 years. I need to watch that again. <laughs> Matrix. Oh, well, Phil, thank you very much for that donation on PayPal, dude. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? When you, I mean, personally, I, I haven't watched any movies, as it were, for years now. I mean, I've got tons of them, and ones I would, wouldn't mind seeing again, but when you sort of um, come around to the idea that there's so much predictive programming within them things, right? even if you think on um, a conscious level that, oh, they're showing this, they mean that, that's fine. But subconsciously, there's no way you can see what's going on and what you're receiving. So I play on the side of caution and don't watch any of them anymore. Because yeah. it's, it's, it's literally a warfare which is being fought on so many levels. I mean, I remember um, being a, um, privy to the term used back in 2020, digital soldiers. And yeah. lots of people out there, they still believe that the government is there to help them. Well, when they finally realise that, no, it is not the case, it is the exact opposite, then you start to see all of these shifts and changes. And I do believe, and lots of people posted during the time as well, when 2020, when all of the stuff started unfolding, it started waking up more people than they probably hoped for and i believe that is just continuing now well i want to i want to address something really quick because uh yeah shoot um this is something i'm big on my channel as well yes the world is evil yes the construct is pretty effed up and yes there are bots and there's digital soldiers and there's all kinds of men in black and there's different agent smiths and there's npcs that are all throughout this world that are there to trip you up Yes, I, I will agree to every bit of that. Yes to dungeon programming, these constructs in our reality that polarize us, that make us want to choose between sides, that make us want to, to get in, involved in whatever conflicts are unfolding around us. Yes, neg negative default programming affects us on a deep emotional level and we're often depressed and we, even though we don't even have any evidence in the temporal as to why we even feel the way we feel. All this is true. But I'm going to tell you now, Funky Prepper, we have a benefactor because if we did not have a benefactor that mm -hmm. was actually watching out for those of us who were moving in the direction we're supposed to be going, those of us who are waking up from this construct, if we didn't have a benefactor, then we would have been cannibalized into the system a long time ago. Yeah, we, I agree. We, 
we would not have been able to rise up and share our voices and, and, and share with each other these things that we're saying. And I believe that this benefactor is more than just a force that makes you feel good, more than just a force that bestows upon you intuition, imagination, and empathy, the three spiritual qualities that define you as being an immortal being separate from the construct, all the millions of people who are absolutely a part of the system. Listen, this benefactor has to be actively in protection mode because the forces of this world could easily overrun me, but they don't. The yeah, I think that's it. It's easily it. overrun you and many other people, but mm. what is stopping them? What rules of the construct, the simulacrum, the NPCs, the Agent Smiths, what rules are they are they playing by that actually allow us to do the things we do because they have, there has to be rules in place or mm. the benefactor wouldn't be able to restrict their activities. There's I do believe I might have an answer to that question. A long, all... time, long time ago, when I, when I, well, some of my viewers know this, but not everyone, but when I woke up back in 2008, which is when I actually did, um, I come across a fellow researcher by the name of Jordan <laughs> Maxwell. Now, you've probably heard of that guy. And he passed well, last year or so, and big loss to the community, as it were. Now, I remember him saying um, he was approached on numerous occasions, followed FBI, all the rest of it. And he actually told his story, and it's probably somewhere on the Internet. I don't know if it's been deleted. But he said he went to this um, cafe or a restaurant to have something to eat. And the FBI just turned up, sat down with him, and he just said, look, cards on the table, we know all about what you're doing. We know all about what you're exposing and nothing is going to happen to you unless you start putting the messages out there to do something about government. Mm -hmm. As soon as you start saying, "Why well, I want all of you lot to go and do this, this and this, which is going to have serious physical impacts into the system, right. Right. then they will act. But all the time you stray away from that and you just keep telling your truth or whatever it is, you will be left alone. So there might be some truth to that, but it does resonate with me. I mean, if you was to start saying, I want all of you lot to do this, this, and this, it's going to cause massive issues. Then at some point, they're going to say, well, we can't have this guy. He's got an outreach of 100,000 people plus, and they're acting on it, and they're doing serious damage to police or whatever it is. That is going to be a moment when they say, <coughs> so, so what you're describing to me, involved in that. what I'm hearing is, now I, I listened to everything you just said, and just so you'll just so you'll know, um, my publisher also published Jord Jordan Maxwell's books. I have read Jordan Maxwell's material. Jordan cool. Maxwell and I were supposed to do a series of interviews together that were going to be orchestrated through Paul Tice of San Diego. When this was all on the table, it was all planned. Unfortunately, Jordan Maxwell's health never recovered. He just kept yeah, going right. down. Yeah, it's so we were, sad. We, we were yeah. never able to do that. But my publisher wanted me to at least have the interaction with Mr. Maxwell as my own career was taking off. Because yeah. uh, at, at that time, I'd already had three books published, and Jordan Maxwell read my book, The Lost Scriptures of Giza, because my publisher sent it to him. So, wow. uh, yes, I have some history with Mr. Maxwell, and uh, mm. I'm also familiar vaguely with the story you're talking about. And when he was 19 years old, the man he met in a bar. Um, who yes. Was, do you, you know the, the story? Go back to his house and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. The man yeah. basically told him his future and told yeah. him, Look, this is what you're going to do. It's going to be a while. you got some years of training and learning to do, but Incredible. This, is, this is what's going to end up happening. You're going to wake up a lot of people. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> I'm familiar with that story. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, I just learned it like two months ago because I've known a lot about Jordan Maxwell, but I did not know that story until somebody sent me that link because it sounds really close to uh, an incident that I had that I recorded on my own YouTube channel three years ago about what happened yeah. to me when I was 15 years old and I ran away from home. And I ended and I ended up wandering onto some weird facility and I talked to this guy and it was just really unusual. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah, This, this is a... Jordan Maxwell, and what, what I'm hearing from you is, is that it sounds to me that the construct itself is playing by rules. Yeah. And it will continue to do so unless, because what does a construct do? It's a control mechanism. 
So apparently, with from what I'm gathering from what you just said, it sounds to me like the construct doesn't care if you're a beacon of truth waking people up. It only cares if you start doing something that compromises the control mechanism. Yes. So I can see that. I can definitely see that. Yeah, it, it does. It does resonate with me. The more I think about that, I mean. I don't want to just go out there and prove a point because I can just say end in the channel, which is the last thing we want. We want to keep on doing what we're doing. And like I say, um, when you look at where all of this is going, it is, I think people really have to appreciate the, um, how I, it's really difficult to explain, but how I sort of explained it when I was talking to a friend of mine on a live stream a while ago is just imagine that 5% of the global population are truly evil men, women with zero empathy. Mm -hmm. And out of that 5%, however million, hundreds of millions of people that is, how many of those rise to positions of power in everything, military, banking, police, politics, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So you've got all of these people with zero empathy. Do you think they're really going to give a toss about us? And the answer is obviously no. no. And obviously they're li they'll literally do whatever they're told to do because whatever it is at the top of some pyramid, um, call it what you will, you know, they've got unlimited funds. They've got unlimited access to unlimited minds. Yes, and all of these are usually going to be compartmentalized to an extent. And they don't really know what they're doing is having a part of the other bigger story. And if they all got all of these people in control, all of the money, then what we're up against is absolutely an insane machine. So, as you say, when you go to um, intuition and maybe honing it or fine tuning it to as best as we can understand right. and realize that, yes, this is indeed 100 percent assimilation and we are in avatars and we are playing our part in this game. And like you said, there's rules. And I'll, the more I think about it, I think them rules are going to be as soon as you start to tell people about doing something physical back, that yeah. is going to be the point where your little frame just gets dimmer. Yeah. So yeah. So it seems like you're allowed to you're you're allowed to share what is, but you're not allowed to implement strategies to change what is. The status mm -hmm. quo, the status quo must remain. But at the same time, you just described a very harrowing scenario. Even if it five percent is still is huge. Even if yeah. it, even if it was just 0.01 percent of the population that had no empathy, and 0.01 percent of those are the ones that are in 99.9 percent of all the control control positions. Because it doesn't matter who the subservients are. This is how this is this is corporate structure. This is government and military structure. It's yeah, the sure. it's the head of the table that basically sets the perimeters and the mood and the activities of everybody who filters down down. So you it could be a very small cabal of actually soulless individuals. So that that again invokes the proposition that. If this is the case, which it looks like, then there must be a benefactor. There must be a benefactor force that is actively protecting those who at least believe they are protected. Because mm. there's no way that some of us can get away with talking about the things that we've talked about. And we're, and we're yeah. still able to do it. We're mm. still able to do it. So uh, that's why I'm convinced there's a benefactor. I'm convinced that... that mm. The world isn't as evil as we think. It's just it's just controlled by very evil individuals who make us believe the rest of the world is evil as well. So, mm. I, I believe I believe that the, the 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 vast majority of the human family is basically benign, is basically good, and uh, a lot yeah. a lot of the negative character traits that we find in people are a product of their history, their time. They've been victims of this or that. It's they're just a product of their times and their conditions and their culture. But when you strip away the reasons why people have assimilated negative character traits and you're dealing with the individual souls, I think about 99% of humanity is basically good. You know, as you were saying that, I'll just um, bring it up here. Check this out from Trish. <coughs> 138. Oh, no, man. I couldn't have it. It just popped up. Just as you were describing that also. 
And um, before I forget, there's one guy that I need to do a shout out to, and you're going to be watching this probably on the replay. But his name's Dean, and he's he goes sure. under the name of Dean Spartacus okay. on Instagram. Now. I didn't know who Dean was. You know, on Instagram, I don't know if you go on there very often, but you get messages. And if you don't follow them, it ends up in a separate folder. And every now and again, when I get time, I check the folder and went through some of them. And this guy, he started talking some real sweet, nice stuff. And he mentioned you. And at that point, I'll be honest, I've never heard of you. And I think this was um, last year. And mm -hmm. and as a return favour, I gave him a guy who I've been following up until that point, and that guy is Michael Tassarian. Oh, I'm sure you've heard his name. I have. Now, okay. And so I thought, okay, then. So he agreed to look into the guy I'll be looking into, and I agreed to look into yourself. Um, no BS. As soon as I found your channel, I just went through, found a video. I can't even remember which one it was. Totally hooked. And in fact, most evenings I spend just watching all of your videos i don't even immerse myself in you know whatever the the mainstream narrative is of the day etc you're because watching you, archaics you don't have time to watch movies <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> yeah. well do you know what this is another thing we're going we're going back to preparedness now now i do get loads and loads of comments from probably naysayers or whatever it is saying um, I can't afford to to go out and get that knife. I can't afford to go out and get extra food and stuff. Yeah. But lots of these guys, you know, they're they're going down the pub. They're getting tattoos done. They're smoking heavily. They yeah. got um, all the sports channels on their TV. All of the rest of it. And if they just cut that out or limited it, they'd have all this extra money available to get proper old dictionaries. Hey, you know what? Tools, you no, know? I, I want to address that too, Funky. Listen, man. I, I get yeah. that a lot about people talking about money and all this. And listen, money is energy. And if I say I don't have something, then it won't come to me. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. And when people focus on the fact that they need money, it's all it's already an emotional photo negative that you don't have it. Therefore, mm -hmm. that's all you're projecting is lack. So if you want to bring more wealth into your life, the formula is so simple. And there are, so many, there are so many people that have followed it and they're on my channel and they send me emails weekly thanking me. And they even show me pictures of things that they've bought and how their life has changed. This formula is absolutely simple. If you want money, money is the last thing you need to be thinking about. If you want wealth and money in your life, you must always look at the end result and not the middle. The middle is mm -hmm. money. You need to look at what it is you really want in life. What is it you really want in life? Because when you build the mental picture of what you're, the tangibles that you were wanting in your life without thinking about the money, you project that into reality. And there's no negative connotation attached to it. That lack of money is not there because all you're hoping for is the, the individual images to come to life in your life. You want that car. You want that real nice Mercedes Benz or whatever. Listen. Everything is energy. And if you're on, if you're vibrating at the frequency of the thing that you want, I tell people all the time, if the end is secure, the Mercedes Benz is yours. If the end is secure, then every step leading up to it is secure as well. You just have to be patient. But if you think that you have to have money first in order to get that Mercedes Benz, then the reality is going to commiserate and it's going to reciprocate that thought and it's going to make sure that you will never get that mercedes benz until you first make that money for it you mm -hmm. do you doom yourself to a feedback loop you've got to ignore money as a mental picture and you need to only imagine the things that you want you want a whole more you want you want five thousand mres in a, in a storage somewhere that only you know about and then you order them and you and you plastic wrap them Think about those MREs being delivered. Think about all that stuff. Listen, everything is energy. Nothing yeah. is actually tangible. And when you regard everything in life as being just different waveforms of energy that you're not mm -hmm. in contact with right now, then things are going to come to you and gravitate you so much faster. And it, 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 happened, to it happened to me. It happened to me. This true story. You know, always in this job, always in it. 15 <laughs> years, right? And, you know, they made me um, a facilities manager for the building. They wanted me to be top manager, which took me away from the tools. And I love being on the tools. They wanted me to do right. the computer stuff and the meetings and all this corporate BS. And I was just getting more and more disillusioned, more and more unhappy. And situation come to a head. They wanted me to wear one of those and all of this. And I just said, no, 
bottom line is i just quit i just walked out of there and you know what the second i walked out of that door this was early 2021 already knowing that how difficult it's going to be to actually get a job and to provide for my family and my immediate old me would have said that's just scary don't do it but do you know what when i walked out that door it was an amazing feeling it was like i took that great big backpack off my back after a 10 mile hike and the first thing that came to my mind was i can do anything now and it happened and i actually imagined visualized this house living on a mountain already living in a really bad rough part of the world down south england right and it was just literally a split second and i've even done a post on an alternative instagram account and it's almost identical to this house and all i did one situations just kept coming and going and followed the signs and just ended up just ended up here and it's all by helping people advising people really doing what i wanted to do and nothing else was of interest to me at all and all of a sudden i'm doing what i've always wanted to do in the middle of nowhere away from all the idiots people yep. with yep. a loving family doing the job that i love doing the hours that i want to do not working for someone else and not surviving but starting to thrive now and you can do it but the big problem is is lots of people i've never read it but they bought this book called the secret and you're supposed to intent and focus on whatever it is every day complete bs that's yeah. not how i've done it and it's sure as hell not how you done it yeah i don't like and, the secret yeah. nah i've never read it i've got no desire i'm not even drawn to it but it just goes to show if you really want something just that split second intent put it out there and then you do you do the real work you do yeah. the stepping stone all you got to do is move in the direction you want that requires physically you got to move physically in that direction and reality will reciprocate i'll tell you this is why i know we have a benefactor this is why i know the over yeah. soul is actually watching out for at, le at least those of us who believe that we were being watched out for. Mm -hmm. I mean, if somebody intrinsically believes that they have no protection, I promise you they will have no protection. So yeah. we live in the divine mirror. We live, we live in an observer dependent universe. And that, and that means it's interactive. And if you don't do your part, then you can get X'd out really quick, really quick. Yeah. Damn straight. Yeah, 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 for sure. Bloody hell. But as I say, when you look at um, all of the physical things, in what we perceive to be real anyway, based on the five sense reality, as most of us will agree with now. There's so many things that could get us. I mean, out there, what if you got like um tornadoes, you got wildfires, you got all of this stuff, you got Yellowstone, etc. I yeah. mean, man, you know, part of this construct, this program that we're in now, you know, we're in this tiny little island here in the UK, and you guys are out there with all of these things that can kill you. You go far north, you got wolves and bears. You got people running around with guns. Do you know what? I was actually in America in 1989, um, in October. I was out there for a whole month. Wow. Um, stayed two weeks in a place called Pomona, and yeah. the Chino Chino Valley. And the other two weeks we spent just driving around. We stayed with a friend out there. Now I remember going into Target that shop back then, and I saw something I would not ever believe until I saw it with my own eyes. Oh, you yeah, could buy you can buy an m60 in there yep in in a supermarket with everything else and i was man you know i was currently serving in the forces back then over here and yeah. when i went out there and saw that i said man i've got to do everything i can to come out to america <laughs> seriously man, listen, I, I could actually do videos in pawn shops and show you full arsenals of military weapons all over the walls right here right here within two or three miles and so Texas and the rest of the United States, weapons are for sale everywhere, everywhere. Do you know what I will refer to Texas on here on a regular basis? Yep. Zion. It's the, it's yeah. the last place to fall if it ever dies in America is Zion, yeah. man, for sure. Yeah, well, when, when Biden started doing a bunch of dumb stuff and implementing all kinds of rules, our governor, Governor Greg Abbott, he went ahead and he implemented seven different laws in Texas that protected people from any from from uh, external uh, getting getting in trouble with the Fed for guns. He went ahead and just he just took all the gun laws off the books. Now you don't even have to have a permit. You can go buy a gun anywhere. You can carry a gun, open carry. You can conceal a gun in Texas. It's like the old West now. In all the, in all the laws in Texas, support it. The only problem is, is you can get in trouble with the feds if you if you leave Texas. 
Yeah. But yeah, you can buy so, all kinds, you can buy all kinds of weapons in Texas. I think a common um, probably misconception is um, what we have here in the UK is all of America is like that, but it's not just not the case. Not, you can go. Not. You really need to know every state of what you can and can't do. It's insane. Yeah, it's absolutely. It it's not what we think. And another thing is what a lot of Americans think here in the UK. There's no guns. But let me tell you this, my brother. That is BS, big yeah. time. I have gone into someone's house that were a tiny <clears> little <throat> suburban back street gone in there and this guy is a section five licensed owner for firearms and he's a gunsmith <laughs> i've gone in there and i have seen fully automatic weapons automatic um semi-automatic shotguns right. all the ammunition and stuff this is just a bulk standard house right. armored glass doberman dogs etc and there are many many of these all over the uk and we're not even talking about the guns the russians the eastern european gangs all over london Right. There are more guns over here than a lot of Americans realize. Yeah, we don't walk around in the street, but there are still a lot of guns over here. Oh, I believe that. I believe that. Yeah. Mm. It's, uh, nobody's, I mean, no, there are no laws that can be implemented that are going to be obeyed all the time. It's just not going to happen. It's, yeah. uh, like I said, when I was over in Chino, that was in California. I mean, guns are fine there now, but something happened between 89 until whenever when we got left eyes, I guess. And you just can't do anything out there. It's crazy, isn't it, in California right now? Well, California is still, it's still pretty wild, but I know California has a, a massive amount of street gangs, and they're all armed to the teeth. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, they got yeah, South Central they got Los Angeles, whole, Thompson, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. got 10 millimeters, 9 millimeters. They got all your Glocks and Rugers and shotguns and deer rifles and, and even automatic weapons. Uh, Mac 10s and Uzis are popular weapons with the street gangs. Yeah. yeah, the, gang, yeah. the gangs in California are armed. Listen, listen, people don't realize if the United States is ever invaded, the military is really not needed. That's it. The, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's really not needed. I mean, people are going to defend their neighborhoods and territories, and they're going to have problems in Cal like Los Angeles. Uh, like one of my moderators is out of Stockton, California, and she'll tell you, she Jahara, she'll tell you all about Stockton, California. It's gangland. And uh, mm. San Francisco, maybe some of Sacramento, but definitely Los Angeles. Yeah, it was. I mean, don't get me wrong, militaries will come in with all kinds of uh, air support Probably. and stuff like that, but they're still mm. going to have urban warfare is the worst for a soldier yeah. when they're not yeah, on a, is. when they're not on an open battlefield. Everything changes in urban warfare. It's different rules and different vulnerabilities. So, mm. yeah, invading the United States would be the last thing an army would do. They might That's try. Why it. it hasn't happened, in it? Yeah, yeah, it never happened. But it, it might. They might try it, but they're not going to like what happens. Because, I mean, look you know, at the Japanese. They considered it when they thought, hold oh, on a minute. Do you know what I mean? They Behind every yeah. single door is going to be more than one gun. And that's not even counting the armed forces, like you said. Yeah. Big shot. <laughs> yeah, it would be terrible. I mean, even, even 8, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12-year-old kids will come out there with shotguns. You can't do nothing about that. I mean, mm. uh, everybody in Texas. I mean, if anybody ever invaded Texas, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, you would have to destroy the whole state. I mean, you would have to bomb all the buildings to, you know what I mean? If you're not willing to destroy the entire infrastructure with bombs and missiles and all that, and you want to go in with soldiers, there's just no way you can do it. Not in Texas. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've got also got um, Alex Jones out there, right? Yep. Yep. All right. We're just putting up on here now. Here we go. Um, Harley would put it in that, wouldn't he? 695,662 kilometers squared is the size of Texas. And currently you've got nearly 30 million people in well, Texas. Well, hold on. Do you have to understand? The numbers you just read are from the, last, are from the last census. All right? Yeah. In, the, in just the last 12 months, over 150,000 people from California alone have moved to Texas. That's not counting all the other states. So wow. I'm, we're already thinking there's about 35 million people here that are on the census. Now, that's not counting the 5 million or so undocumented from Mexico, Brazil, uh, Venezuela, Central yeah, yeah, America. Of course, you've got to pop the border, you? Yeah. There is definitely over 40 million people in Texas. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what you were saying about um, the influx of a certain type of person, should we say? <coughs> have you seen it getting crazy out there? Because we have seen sort of, I call them migrants over here. They tend to call them 
um, asylum seekers and all the rest of it. But what we're seeing is, is the majority of all of these people coming over here in the last 12 months, should we say, are overwhelmingly men of fighting age between 20 and 40 years old, no women, no kids, no obese people, no disabled people. And they are all being put into hotels and they are being moved from hotels into Ministry of Defence training facilities all over the United Kingdom. Now, if you can't smell a rat there, not you, Jason, but the viewer, you need to start looking into things because my dad is um, a true historical statistician with military. And I've just found a map earlier, which I'm going to post to him when I see him next week. And because we've done a live stream together. And these, the first thing he said was, it'd be really interesting to know all of the locations of these hotels and look at it from a militarily um, strategic point of view regarding where are they positioned in regards to urban environments, um, strategic importance areas within the country. And no. what are you seeing out there in Texas? None of that. None wow. of that. Yes, it's all. Yeah, believe me, if there was any activity like that going on in Texas, there would be a whole network of people talking about it. It would be all over different social media. Listen, Texans mm -hmm. are too on top of it. Even what's going on at the border is very secretive because all that's known is all these migrants are, are have, have showed up at the border, but they they're shuttled away on federal buses and they're not taken to take they're they're taken out of Texas. They're taken wow. out of Texas. We don't know where they're going, but they're not staying mm. here. Texans wouldn't mm. even allow them to stay here. It's all uh, yeah. yeah, it's 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 Texas is not not going through anything like that. There's no believe me, any hotels show show that type of activity. There would be people all over Texas sounding the horn. It was uh mm. it's a totally different, it's a different infrastructure out here, it's a different temperament to the people. There would be whistleblowers everywhere. Mm. That you wouldn't be able to keep that quiet. Here. There's a lot of people, especially all over social media, talking about it, have been for the last at least um, one year. Yeah. But it just seems that like, um, like we said before about governments, you know, people, um, the puppets, as it were, on the top, like Biden, and we had that idiot Boris Johnson and all the rest of it. Right. They just don't care. It doesn't matter what we say. It doesn't matter what we protest. Nothing seems to change. And it's weird because something tells me that globally, there's there's going to be no resistance until the armed patriots of America overthrow the government. If and when that happens, I do believe that will light that firework and the rest of the world will follow suit. I mean, France, they're not actually trying to do it, but they are seriously pissed about what's going on. Yeah. Well, and don't people, don't yeah. do not underestimate the French. Remember, yeah. the, the yeah. great revolutions of all of Europe started when the French started cutting off the heads of the monarchy. The French, <laughs> the Revo Napoleon, the French yeah, Revolution yeah. started the domino effect that collapsed all the mo monarchies of Europe and replaced them with democracies and republics. So until before that, it was kings and queens ruling all the all the countries of Europe. French Revolution French French Revolution ended that. It was a, it was the first domino. So mm. Yeah, in Europe. And also, you look into the United Kingdom as well. I mean, you go through your history. You look at even the Peasants' Revolt as well. I mean, we could we could see a reenactment of that over the next 24 months, the way it's going. Right. The, right. the, the feeling oh, of all let of me, stuff. Let me, let me offer a different scenario that is, yeah. very, is very plausible about what you're talking about, what's going on in the UK. <clears throat> If, if I was a military tactician and I needed... Middle Eastern troops to understand the ways Western ways and be able to speak English un rudimentary enough to get through so they could conduct a military operation. I would train them in a host country where those people spoke the language of the country that I'm intend on attacking, but I'm not mm -hmm. going to train them in the country that they're going to that they're going to attack. I'm going to I'm going to put them up in facilities and I'm going to spend two or three years. I'm going to train them in England. I'm going to train them in Britain and Wales, corn and whatever, because these are all English speaking peoples and they're Westerners. So my troops, I'm, I'm speaking from the perspective of some type of 
globalist leader who has plans to attack a Western English speaking country. So I would train them where they can learn English and they can learn Western culture and I would and in an ur urban areas where they can train and they can get used to hotels and they can get used to all the trapping yeah. Western civilization, tea like shops, tea right. shops, coffee shops. And I would do that. And then I would start taking them out, replacing with new guys to train, taking them out once they're trained, replacing them with new. And then in my host country, when I'm ready to attack the actual country that's my target, I have an army here that speaks the language of the enemy, understands the ways of the enemy, can move among the enemy as if he's a citizen. And I did all this training in a nation that has nothing to do with my actual yeah. objective. So. Yeah. That's that's what I would see. I would not see if it's become so obvious that they're there, then I'm telling you, you're not the target. So mm. it's just something to think about. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's all really good points because, you know, most people, all they get is the mainstream, which is obviously, you know, they do whatever um, they want people to do. Right, right. And we got Annette. Thank you for that donation on PayPal. I just saw a pin come up there. That's awesome. Appreciate that. And um, yeah, it's just in mad. I mean, there was an old proverb on there: "May you live in interesting times." Something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. You remember? And yeah. it is. I mean, what I like about what you do, and I try and do a similar thing, is yes, I tell people what I believe is going on based on all of the emails and stuff that I get from what people are actually seeing and hearing where they are, the changes, etc. So I just present that and try and build on it to to remain as factual as I can, because the more right. information people have the more that they can plan and prepare because the mainstream even releases yeah. any of it I but what i always try to do right near the end is what you do is always fire off positive stuff because people need it right because like we said earlier there's going to be people out there when this collapse happen they're just going to do themselves in because they won't be able to handle it yeah okay and let me tell you this everyone you don't have to worry because no one's ever going to be in a key location no one's going to be financially sound no one's going to be in a peak of physical and mental health no one's going to have every single item they're ever going to need no one's going to know all of the skills in tactics and how to forage food etc no, that person does not exist so don't worry yourself about trying to be that guy I True, agree. Right? well yeah. I'm on, on my own channel among my own listeners i'm really big on on, on telling people and because I believe this, that we don't have uh, we don't have the situation where we're bereft of all solutions, that the solutions are always very local to us. It often takes a different perspective to see that the things that we think are very severe problems that are in our life are not really severe at all. Once we get the perspective of somebody else who's not us and can see from a different perspective, I do not believe the oversoul is ever going to put us in a situation. If we believe in it and we believe that we are divinely protected, if we believe that there is an aegis of uh, authority and protection that governs our lives, I don't believe that if there's an infrastructure collapse, if there's a military invasion and whatever goes on, that there isn't going to be multiple different outs that are afforded to those who are looking for them. I don't yeah. think I don't think that we're ever going to be put into a situation that there isn't a solution for the problem when it arises. Prepping is good because we'll have access to resources when we need them at that time of an emergency. But not having resources doesn't mean that you'll always be without. It just means that you need to change the trajectory in order to get the things that you should have prepped for. Or needed. Absolutely right. Needed. And another thing, Jason and, and me, we, we say the same message. The most important thing to do is to make sure that you have items which are going to be useful. Okay, mm -hmm. so rather than just go out there and get all of the money you can and just buy loads of bars of gold and put them somewhere you can't eat gold right you're going to need stuff barter i mean even That's like things like this which i'm going to send to jason right loads of people need coffee and i'll say to my viewers try and concentrate on what people are going to need or moreover what they're going to be addicted to so you're looking at tobacco alcohol mm -hmm. caffeine all of these things trust me when people are desperate, they are going to do a whole week's work in your garden for this if yeah. they haven't had it for a year. Yeah. 
No doubt. You know what? This right here. Here it is. <coughs> One little bottle of bourbon aged 10 years. One little yeah. bottle like this will get you a weapon if you need it. Yeah, 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 sure. you, you know, a bottle like this would get your whole family fed by somebody who really wants that alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've done a, I did a video recently explaining to people the silver and gold that you have means nothing after 48 hours. If yeah, you yeah. haven't spent that money within 48 to 72 hours after a systemic collapse, it's just metal. It's just yeah, like yeah, yeah. Rock. it doesn't no one's gonna take it. It doesn't matter if you have twenty five thousand dollars in one hundred dollar bills. Uh um uh, stacked up hidden on your property after about 48 hours to 72 hours there isn't a store open that's going to accept your money mm -hmm. and there's not going to be anything on the shelves that people haven't already pilfered so stacking up gold silver coins bullion and cash will never do any will never do you any good mm -hmm. in a real emergency you got to have mm -hmm. items you can trade yeah i try a, i try and hedge my bets on everything and I've got no gold, but I do have some silver. Oh, now, a lot of people do. I have silver. Yeah, the reason I've done that is because, you know, when all of this stuff comes down the road, hopefully we're going to have time to see that silver rise in price. And when it does, when we feel, or when we know, you know what I'm saying, when we know the mm -hmm. time to check out, that is when all of that gets converted to cash. That cash convert gets converted to stuff that we're really going to need. And I've right. had so many questions. I replied to a comment only the other day on a video. I've got all of this money in one bank account. What do I do? I said, well, think about it as a prepper. Spread it as much as you can. Diversify. Put it in different banks. Take some of it out. Buy useful things. Buy a little bit of silver. Buy some tools or weaponry. Buy some books. Books are so invaluable. Okay. Just imagine if there's an EMP, there's no electronic stuff going to work. Between Jason and I, our library is insane. Now, I've never talked about my library because I believe that's a man's personal thing. Now, I've got some really, really old books, some really rare books. Some of them are really expensive. Mm -hmm. And those are absolute treasures, especially not so much historical books, although that is seriously important because future generations are going to need to know the truth of what's happened because... Jason will tell you hands down that history is being edited, deleted, etc., on a regular basis. You've got them old books and you can show grandkids, grandkids, grandkids the real truth of what really happened is incredible. Right. But not only that, books to help you rebuild things. Don't forget, this war has been going on and it is a war for a long, long time. And the standard of um, education and intelligence over the last hundred years has declined. You can see it decline. I mean, look at kids' handwriting now, because they're all taught to use keyboards. Man. Look at a handwriting from a 10-year-old in 1920s. It's amazing, far better than some guys can do at my age in their 50s right now. Right. So when you see all of this happen, building stuff, books, manuals, useful things, they are going to be the things of value rather than no preps, no weaponry, no skills, but a safe full up with gold bars. Yep. Ain't going to do jack shit, Junior. Yep. I have a book from like 1941 on the Girl Scouts of America, How to Survive in the Wilderness. And it's an old book. Oh, lovely. That's one of yeah. these books back here. I don't remember where it's at, but it's a, uh, you know what? This might be it. Here it is right here. Here it is right here. Oh, I've seen that book. This is an yeah. old book. And you would think yeah. that this that this wasn't valuable. But it has everything you need to know about North America plants, all the insects, medicinal properties, everything about roots, tree roots, ferns, uh, different type mm. of fish and, and the medicinal properties for all that. How to make mm. everything out of different woods. And, and it's just phenomenal. It's 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 packed. Even things as simple as textiles, how to make baskets that hold water. All that's yeah. all that is in this book from 1941. It's all needed, yeah. seriously, because like you say, you can't just go on Google anymore. You know, nope. that's not going to be available. Nope. And um, yeah, also skills as well. I mean, my partner, you know, we can we're in Wales, so there's sheep everywhere. We can get wool for free everywhere. <laughs> she can spin it on a spinning wheel, which I've got in that room in there. And she has made me socks. She has made me jumpers. She has made stuff for my right. son. And that's just right. one skill, which not many people, youngsters, actually have now. Right. But 
you you know exactly what was going on with Native Americans, and you know how amazingly resourceful and a connection they had with the planet of what to do, the seasons, when to move, where to move. Yep. Everything was just incredible, and nothing was really. They didn't absolutely rape the earth like what we're doing now, right. and yet they survived for thousands of years. You know, yep. it's insane, and we yeah, need yeah. to go back to that. In the Native American communities, they all had their assignments. Like the younger boys would always be, they spent their childhood with the flint arrows. Flet, fletchery was one of the main things they had to learn before they were even allowed to use the bow and arrow. They had to yeah. master how to make an arrow from the from the flint arrowheads and, and the twine that they used from the deer entrails, doe entrails, raccoon entrails they used for the, for their string. Yeah, it's a <coughs> Native Americans, they... They had special appointed net makers. The uh, so when they cast their nets over a river, so they could scoop up fish for everybody to eat. Yeah, they had all that's in these little Girl Scout books, and that's what mm -hmm. makes it so valuable. It's uh, we're you're literally, you are literally going back to the Neolithic. When yes, all, when all the power yeah. goes out. I believe so. Yeah. I mean, there's so much going on. You know, like um. Um, what is his name? Ben from Suspicious Observers, where he talks about what the sun's doing. And, um, you know, with all of this, um, the North and South Pole is just moving at such a rate now. And the magnetic shield is pretty much gone now and again. This basically, we are at a point in history where we rely so much on electronics and computers. I mean, without it, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing right now. Right. It's so easy for that to just stop. And that could be all sorts of things. That could be a cyber attack. It could be a physical terrorist attack. It yep. could be something from the sun, or it could be something else. Now, I don't know if the guys are ready to hear about the Phoenix phenomenon, but man, you know, when you look at that period in time, and like you say, when certain people, maybe ourselves included on that, feel like they're on the right path and they got protection at that certain point. It's all good in the hood. It's insane, but like well, you know, no one can prepare for that, probably. Yeah, well, that that that's major. It's systemic. It's an mm. ancient cycle, but we still have seventeen more years for that. But before that, seventeen years begins, there's going to be a building up of phenomena, and one yeah. of the, one of those is earthquakes and volcanism, because the Phoenix phenomenon is always accompanied with volcanoes and volcanism, and that causes gigantism from ambient radiation uh sometimes there's a vapor canopy sometimes it doesn't take this time i believe 100 percent there's going to be another vapor canopy i believe the elite know this as well i believe they know all about the phoenix phenomenon and i mean even hollywood comic books magazines uh fiction books everything you see in the movies almost everything is screaming about the phoenix people send me emails every single day with showing me all these phoenix references in music in music and movies and comic books in video games it's everywhere now that people are waking up to what the phoenix phenomenon is the number 138 the fine structure constant how these are connected people are now seeing them when they were very well hidden in all these in all these media they're not hidden anymore now that people are waking up to it they see it it's very very obvious so, yeah, you know what it's funny you saying that because as you were saying that <coughs> i don't know if matt's shown you but has matt shown you that email i sent yeah that, i did yeah. see that 1902 the yeah. bright, the bright flash in the sky that was seen in yeah, that yeah, yeah, newspaper yeah. article yeah uh listen people all over the world have looked at my 1902 videos a lot of them were skeptics at first and they looked at my four videos on 1902 but they but they they picked up the torch and they continued yeah. that research i published everything that i found all around the world in different old books about 1902 what other people have done is looked in their local newspapers local books local microfish from their Microfish. local library. Yeah, yeah, I remember them as a local library. library. Yeah, yeah. And they, listen, yeah. I could fill books up with all mm -hmm. the local stuff. Yeah, me so too. If all this was going around the world on local level, then it means on national and international levels, all this was hushed up. Hmm. 1902 <laughs> was that year, wasn't it? That was, and I'll tell you what, another thing as well, which made me just smile when I see some of your videos, and you mentioned a seriously underrated amazing person who wrote the book the book of the damned charles fort charles that fort. book until i've i've 
I teach survival courses and prepper courses. And um, one of the guys was speaking to me, he said, can you recommend any books which will make me um, think of more along the outside of the box? And I just said, book of the damned. Charles thought, read that book. And yeah. if you are a skeptic now, trust me, when you finish that book, you will not be. Yeah. And that book's an amazing For anybody, anybody who doesn't know, Charles mm. Hoy Fort published The Book of the Damned in 1919 after 24, 25 years of studying all the scientific reports throughout Oxford, Yale, and the New York Public Library. His data was amazing. He's, yeah. And his conclusions, as found all throughout the books, all the scientific reports are cited, geo, geo astrophysical journals, Nature, Discover Magazine, he cited them all. All, and it's amazing. And oh, he, literally, sick, yeah. he literally documented 10,000 different phenomena that have fallen from the skies that it's inexplicable. And yeah. his, his, his conclusion was that 1902, something happened for which he doesn't understand. And he admits he doesn't understand, but he calls 1902 that other dark age. And he documented so much phenomena. All he, he documented uh -huh. that a red star appeared. He, he he documented that a red star appeared and moved through the heavens, and that phenomena started falling all over the world. The red, red dust, red mud, or red mud, earthquakes. All this stuff was documented in scientific journals. Mm -hmm. And yet, in 1919, when he finally published his book, it's almost as if the entire world totally ignored what happened in 1902. I know, very. And do you know what? When <coughs> I watched your um, um, program, um, Discord, I think it is, about the Mandela effect, yes. there was, there's one thing that jumped into my mind. And, and, and I'm, I swear, I remember seeing um, comments of other people agreeing with me, but as yet, I have not found them. And what that was, was um, an event that happened in history when the Challenger disaster the space shuttle mm -hmm. everywhere you look it says a certain year i swear it wasn't that year because i remember watching that and i was in a certain school mm -hmm. and when i watched it live all of the kids in the uk was made to watch that event and the course it ended in disaster for the dates that they're saying that that actually happened complete bs no way because if them dates that they are saying everywhere and i mean everywhere you can't find any alternative date apart from the one that they're putting out there, I would have been a completely different school. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I know I know the first one blew up in 1986. Mm. The first exactly. yeah, 86, I would have been in senior school. And this I remember it yeah. in my middle school, and I would, it would have been a few years before yeah, that. Yeah, and 86 was the first one blew up as it was ascending, killed all mm. seven astronauts, uh, yeah. allegedly, allegedly. The allegedly. other one was yeah. in 2003 in February or late January. It was supposed to be re-entering, and one of the titanium oh, shields was, came off the yeah. wing, and, and, they, and they literally burned alive. But uh, now that's just allegedly. We really don't know the true stories. We don't mm. know. We don't know the true stories. We just know that two shuttles were, were, were destroyed. But, mm. uh, yeah, one was in 1986, one was in 2003. You know? Absolutely bizarre, isn't it? In 1986, you, mm. you're saying that all the children, all the schools in the U.K. made the made the kids watch the first one in 1986 when they yeah. were sending a teacher into space? That one? Yeah. Listen, they made all the everybody in the United States, all the kids had to watch that, too. I wonder if that was some type of programming. Since, yeah. Since, 100%. I yeah. feel it is because they when you look at all of those pieces, yeah, 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 no. for sure. And do you know what? It'd be really good if anyone else watching this video <laughs> now distinctly remembers when they saw that event, 1986. It wasn't 1986. I think it was before, whether it's a year or two. I really did try to sort of go through when I started school from what year to the next. Now, my mum, when she was alive, she would have known exactly. But when I asked my dad, he's not so coherent on the dates when I started this school and that school. So it's very difficult for me to try and wind back my life to see exactly. But I swear it was, did not happen in 86 when they said it was. Yeah. Not a chance because I would have been, I know I would have been in a different school. But right. trying to find out the exact term times and changes, be yeah. interesting to see if people aren't there. You know, it's crazy. That's crazy. It is crazy. I don't know, man. I know the Mandela effect is real. Yeah, tell me about it, dude. I got, I got, I got a, I have a moderator who has a massive collection of Mandela mm -hmm. effects, and 
during that video you're talking about, I think it's the one you're talking about. We did two Mandela effect videos, but during that video, we, we made some discoveries. And one of them was that the Mandela, the Mandela effect seems to only affect things that are very popular in culture that many, many people could agree on. It yeah. doesn't seem to be little subtle, little, little weird things. It's always major things that people, people would be able to notice. And Keep two, going. the the big discovery that we made during that video, we didn't go into that video with that discovery. We made the discovery in the middle of the video discussion on Discord. And that discovery was, is we can't think of a single Mandela effect example that harms humanity. And that's that's really important. Let me explain well, why. Let me explain why. The joking is five to it all, you know. It's almost as if it's like benefactor protocol asking yeah. you to wake up. Let me explain right. why. Let me explain yeah. why. Let's turn the table on that. Let's discuss Mandela effect that's designed to harm you. Okay. Here's a real easy one that could kill a million people in a day. Imagine a Mandela effect where you look up at the lights of a stoplight and you see a certain color, so you just keep driving. But when you blink right before you're about to get impacted, you look up and that's not the light that's there. You you understand? Easily in one second across, across North America in one second, Mandela effect doing that could kill a million people easy. Imagine, imagine every little scenario of where you actually thought something was safe so you did it only to find yourself falling 500 feet to your death a, a second later when you realize oh the end of the end of that walkway was right there how did i not see that but you did mm -hmm. see it so if Ma so mandela effects if they were harmful could actually kill people every minute of every hour of every day but we're not finding any every every example of mandela effect that we've recorded seems to be benign meaning yeah. meaning it's only there to be noticed which is very interesting it means mm -hmm. that we're being communicated and some something is trying to communicate us and the only possible message could be pay attention your reality is being edited exactly well you can't you can't say it any other way i completely agree you, absolutely yeah I it, mean, was a, you it, was hell, it was a hell of a session it wouldn't it was a hell of a session i really enjoyed it that night i know i couldn't believe it i mean i actually watched it twice i had to and yeah that's like four hours or so plus to care for a way yeah that was long it was but long. yeah that was really cool that that discord meeting on there but yeah, like I said, guys, if you don't already know, I'll put the links to Jason's <laughs> website and his YouTube channel below this video. And also links to other um, videos and stuff, which you can see for free on YouTube, all about like the society stuff. One of them is called Apocalypse Man. I don't know if you've ever seen that one. Hmm. Pretty cool little thing for about 20 minutes or so. It gives people lots of um, hints and tips about should you know these events unfold where life changes big time. Um, what was it? The Blackout one. And it was another one, which I believe was a BBC documentary, too, in two parts um, about when the lights go out. I can't remember seeing that one myself. I may have done. I can't quite remember. But the links are below this video. So if any of you guys want to look into that sort of stuff, especially, you know, some of you new guys. I mean, I'm getting probably like yourself, like 7,000 or whatever new subscribers every 28, 30 days or whatever it is. And lots of them just... I literally waking up right now or woke up a year ago or something and like i say i'm very fortunate i feel very fortunate that i started to wake up shall i say back in 2008 because it's given me a long time to get my head around all the shit that's coming down the pipe right now right if i was to try and put myself pre my 2008 life <laughs> to last week finding out about all this stuff right now Dude, that's a brain fryer right there. That is a lot to take on board. It is a lot. I mean, you get it yourself. Where do I start prepping? What do I do? What's, what do I need? And I'm thinking, wow, I covered all this years ago. But this is some guy well, who's literally, you know, take, just waking take, up now. Take into consideration exactly what you just admitted. Hmm. If that is true for you, then it's probably true for 
all of us that it was necessary for this waking up procedure to last for a few years instead of instantly, because then we would have been overwhelmed with a whole new paradigm for which we would not have been able to process. But because Mm -hmm. we're waking up over a period of time, and many of us are at different levels in different states, and because it's lasted, because 2020 happened, that was the defining point, basically, in what we call the truth or experience. That was the defining point. 2020 woke a lot of people up. And then 2021 continued to wake up people. 2022, it became a circus. And now in 2023, it's absolutely unbelievable what, what we're seeing in, in the yeah. world politics and stuff. So taking it into what you taking into consideration what you just said perhaps it was necessary that this be a drawn out process because the human psyche is fragile and there are a lot of people that would not be able to process all this quickly yeah i, I, I tend to agree with that I mean, like i said you know when i started waking up in 2008 i went on a serious four year solid heavily researching and it wasn't just online it was mainly books and you found this yourself i I pretty much know already that you find a book then you look within that and it recommends other books then you get them books you start to read them and then before you know it you know your your personal library at that point is probably three or four books and it's very easy over four years to accumulate over a hundred books yes all sorts of broad seriously interesting topical points but not only that you can read those hundred books in four years yes, you and can. you might not understand most of it but you go back to it from what you've learned 10 years after that and you can reread some of them they will tell you some different things which you never noticed the first time you read them that's right based yeah. on how we are expanding our awareness our knowledge and our understanding of what the author was absolutely meaning at that point in time when it was written insane i mean libraries are beautiful in ajs they are i live in them <laughs> yeah Hell, I live in them. I love them. You know what? We've we've got like um, an antique shop not far from here. And um, when I went in there, and it was just ah, oh, the books. If you was to walk in there, dude, you would have to do really well to stop that hard on man. I'm not joking. It's is everywhere. Yeah, it's really really old books right through the the classics and all of the ages. It's insane. And some of them you open them up and they're just falling apart. And they don't wow. want much money for them. It's incredible. Well, I may, I may, I may have somebody, or I may myself just email you later if you want to go visit there. And uh, believe me, I would compensate you. But if there's books on those shelves that I recognize, I will send you the money for them. I'll do you a long video because the amount of times I've been in there, I've been in there on my own, and right. I can literally just go really slowly across <laughs> hundreds of books, hundreds of books. Yes. And- there- Believe me, I would definitely, I would definitely purchase the right books if I saw them on those shelves, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, but like I say, you know, every now and again, and it's usually off the back of watching some of your videos, I'll just pause the video, I'll go on eBay, and I'll just put in all sorts of stuff from 1800s, right. 1700s, and all these come up, and you think, right. oh, what was, oh, look at that, um, historical data points of, you know, between right. 1790 or whatever for the next 100 oh, years. Yeah. Well, that would be quite interesting. And yeah, there's loads of books on eBay in the UK. I mean, do you actually look on eBay US for old books? Actually, I I have never hunted for books online. I have always gone. There's no end to. I just came back from my California trip, and I have a guy. I have I have John now on the team. He's he's literally cataloging and photographing. Because when I get old books, I have every single cover page title page the book itself and then every single black and white photo or illustration i photograph and i put in my archives for video you know if i might use them for videos or something like that so or for some of my intros i have he's got 85 books to do now and these are all my <laughs> newest additions to my library but uh, uh yeah I, you know that's a reminded me when i was going through this the other day i love i, I love that book oh. just looking at it it's, it's so much more than a dictionary. It's yeah. seriously, wow. I mean, look at the um, the yeah. quality of all of the maps and stuff on there. Yeah, they are. It's just, it's just in wicked condition. And there's tons, yeah. there's more books than people realize in the shops out there. 
Yeah, the charts, the charts in the artwork, the pen and ink artwork that's in some of these prints is mind blowing. Yeah, How they yeah, just yeah. drew these, they just drew all this stuff. It was just beautiful. That's why I, I take pictures of all that for my channel. I'll tell you what, I was one of my prized possessions book wise was um The Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manly P. Hall. Manly P. Hall, right. I read and it. It's it's um I think it's a gold jubilee anniversary edition. And the actual book is probably it's so it's over it's definitely over a foot tall big big heavy thing oh you must and have in, a, yeah you got a special edition in full color yeah the only thing is it's watermarked one sort of um i don't know so about a quarter yeah. of it on one corner which doesn't right. go all the way through yeah. but i've since looked for it um on ebay now and again and just can't find it and yeah. i paid 200 pound for that um back in 2012 Wow. So I wouldn't have a clue what that would be worth now, but based on I just can't find it anywhere. It may have gone, but it isn't for value. It's the the, the importance of the information within and the condition right. of it too. Right. And well, the edition you're talking about, I, I wouldn't know where to find one beautiful like that, an old one from the 30s or 40s or 50s. That's that's amazing. But you can get that book on Amazon now as a cheap paperback for about thirty dollars. But wow. uh, it's just a paperback. It's just an old cheap paperback they threw together. But it's a copy of Manly P. Hall's uh, "The Secret Teachings of All Ages." So, oh, it's an, yeah. it's an amazing book. Yeah, I mean, I, I know yourself. If you were to actually hold it and look at it, you'd just be like, "Wow!" Yeah, he, every he, single thing in that is just quality. The pages are thick. When all of the, the color and um, plates are on there, it's in yeah. twice. It's separated by almost like fine sort of tracing paper type thing. It's all the lovely. yeah, all the old books use a little rice paper to protect the ink blot. Yeah. Rice paper, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got them all, all these books have them too. Yeah, they got the yeah. little rice paper deals. Yeah. It's trying to find like um the keep them in tip top condition because like you say over years, you know, you get some worms in there. That's a big nightmare, isn't it? I have a video about it. I don't know if you've seen it, but I've got one video that all it does is just show the public. Look, this is why we don't have copies to a lot of old. Yes, books. I remember seeing that. Yeah, they're falling the apart. Right? Library and it shows you how all the damage worms do to books. After about mm. three hundred years, books just can't survive. Yeah, you just can't. So, with what you're doing at Archaics, when you're like um, you're preserving them, but not only that, you know, that information is spread worldwide now with the super packs, etc. It's right, just right. that's awesome how that went through. Yeah, I digitized all. I digitized all of it so people can get them in in, in, mm. in our thumb drives. Yeah. No, that's seriously, seriously cool. But what you'll have to do is um I I sent you an email which I just found online because you know when I tried replying to Matt, nothing happened, so I guess he's busy. Um I don't, you'd have to send me an email. The email address is blow this. All right. An email that I can get to you easy. Then I can share loads of stuff with you quickly then without having to go through all of the other stuff. Cool. But if you hit me up your address, so I'll get you some coffee and some other bits and pieces sent out because I know you're going to freaking love that stuff. It's a bad uh, thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I, can right. already, I can already taste it. Once you open up and you smell it, <laughs> dude, you're, you're done. Yeah, <laughs> Man, you ain't coffee. Well, okay. <laughs> Wicked. So, yeah, okay, then, dude, we've been rolling for well over two hours now. So, we're going to probably have to give this um, an end of call now. So, um, if you like what you've been hearing from Jason, like I said, all of the links you're going to need are below this video. Um, thanks to everyone who's been watching this live in the chat. We've had nearly 2,000 people in here tonight. And also you guys watching on the replay. Now, I do realize, like I always say, that time is the most precious commodity. And I seriously appreciate you spending your time watching this stuff. It's, I'm truly grateful, and I'm sure Jason is too. And um, obviously, everyone who's donated, it's amazing. You don't have to. We don't ask for it, but it seriously really helps, okay? And um, the moderators. I mean, I've got my mods, and Jay's got his mods in there, and he's kept all of his clean because we don't want no BS in there. Life's too short for BS as it is. So is there anything you want to say before we sign off, brother? No, man, let's, uh, let's, let's do it again. But next time, I need to be prepared, man, because I got some things to show off. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the Texas prep room weren't prepared. Yeah. Sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But yeah, we'll have a show and tell with some some tools for the job. If you know what I'm saying, bro. That's cool. That's awesome. No, that was, that was good. It's it's. Uh, I'll send you my my. I got a PO box for for mailing uh books and and coffee and all that. And uh, yeah, yeah, sweet. 
And next time you're in that antique store, yeah, take a video of it because I'll blow it up. And if I see titles I want, I'll definitely send you the money paper. Yeah, I'll promise you I will, dude. That's a given. you got that coming. No problem at all. Okay, so thank you, everyone. You guys take care. Thanks for watching and stay funky.